What's up, you fat fucks? Welcome to Enter Tournament of Champions podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you just finished wolfing down an entire uh, turkey by yourself, <coughs> um, like I did. Uh, and you're here to listen to us yip yap while you maybe, hopefully, while you eat leftovers. Because I feel I think we're a good leftovers podcast. I think so too. Not the yeah. show. Yeah, leftovers, leftovers or uh, left. <laughs> yeah, well, both. Right. I'm go- <laughs> I'm glad I can be here as the guy who's never seen Leftovers on the Leftovers podcast. <laughs> uh, JD, what did you think about that one scene with the guy with the, you know, he had the thing and the, pointed the gun at him? I'll be oh, like, the objectively, thing, objectively, the with the it gun? sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that no, scene it, sounds great. <laughs> it was, but I don't know. Well, it was riveting. The exact specific scene that he mentioned, I remember very vividly. <laughs> Uh, it's great. It's good I can, stuff. I can't pay a can watch it all day. It's just probably not the same picture that you have, you know? Oh, so. huh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. What a bad uh, podcast. So we're the uh, we're Enter Tournament of Champions. We take our fa- our personal favorites. There, I mean, there's not really any obje- objectivity when it comes to creating our tournaments. Um, we take our personal favorites of a given genre <coughs> or medium, like movies and gaming, uh, and we put them against each other until there's a winner. And we do that. It's over a span of two episodes, if you haven't heard us before. This episode, we're going to talk about our top ten uh, ind- our individual top 10 favorite holiday movies, um, which is specific to American, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Cause we're fucking American. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> so I'm actually pretty excited to get my holiday cheer on because I've, I haven't, I mean, it's the last few years you just kind of grow out of it. You're just like, I don't give a shit about this holiday anymore. Yeah. And I really <laughs> don't this year, but I'm totally forcing it. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going to force it with some good movies, not like your bullshit, typical movies like, uh, Oh man, I'm trying to think of one. I'm trying to think of one that's like an animated. Okay, so we example, I guess. I like personally, Charlie Brown. Yeah, Charlie Brown. I personally excluded the TV special stuff when I started watching more holiday movies, and I was like, oh my god, there's more out there. That's great. Uh, but like Christmas special for the the all of them. Charlie Brown, Star Wars. Yeah, the fuck. it's. <laughs> uh, and what Star else? Wars. Uh, yeah, they had it. It's out there. That's right. I'm trying to remember what else there is that I used to watch as a kid. The Grinch, the Rudolph, the Creepy Rudolph one. Yeah, the Creepy Rudolph one always – I hated that. I still yeah. to this day fucking hate that cartoon with the crazy <laughs> it's Yeti. so and weird. Fuck off with oh, yeah, dude. It's the so Yeti bizarre. Really um, weird. But, like, we're not talking about those. Weird. We're talking about, like, actual good movies with, like – some of them substance. don't have depth. A lot of them we grew oh, up with. Yeah, there's a couple on my list that don't have any substance. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about our top 10 in that, in that specific genre and in the medium of movies. And, uh, next week we're going to debate until there's a winner. And I think it might be a little bit of a debate. <clears throat> I don't know if we're all going to have the same list, to be honest with you. Um, but this episode is brought to you by Nosy Cashiers. <laughs> when you go to buy wine at fucking Walgreens and the guy's like, oh yeah, what'd you get this for? You can go fuck yourself. Nosy Cashiers. Oh my God. Did that yeah. actually happen today? Yes. I'm oh, really, I'm really glad we're airing this out right now through our sponsorships because uh, <laughs> just none of your fucking business, you know. It's none of your just fucking ring, business. Ring, ring me up, like don't. I don't even want small yeah. talk. Exactly. The less talk, the better. You know. How are you? Good. How are you? All right. Cool. That's it. That's the end. That's, That's all we need. It. I don't need any more, and I won't get you rude. In fact, I'll applaud you for staying the fuck out of my business. <laughs> I'd be good, willing to accept good customer service. A, uh, Man, I got really fucked up on that one time. Like, I'd be like, all right, man. Like, that's about the only level of conversation I'm willing to go through. Uh, even that, I feel like, would make me, uh, oh, yeah, good, yeah, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, wine. my dog was chewing something. I had to yell at him on mute. Um, yeah, the, uh, this dude, I, I go up to buy, like, bagel bites because I don't, uh, you know, it's like a snack before the recording, just in case we go long or whatever. And uh, and wine, and he's like, "Oh, gonna have a party tonight, dude! You're just you're at a Jesus convenience Christ. store. I'm just here for convenience. Just ring me up and don't talk. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not here. Yeah, grocery like you're the reason the why people go to self checkout at Kroger when they're buying three unrelated <laughs> items. Dude, together. hey, can we just give that guy a medal who created self checkout? Like this, <laughs> yeah, or a gal? I don't know. It could have been a gal. That person, you know, uh, Zimzer. Well, let's put a medal on that person." <laughs> I appreciate you going hardcore PC on that, Kyle. I, absolutely. You know, uh, I bring the PC element to this entire podcast. If y'all haven't yeah. noticed yet, so. <laughs> oh, we're we're. I'm Jeff, by the way. Kyle just talked, and JD's the other guy. Yeah, uh, I'm here. So that's that shit's out of the <laughs> way. Um, <laughs> find us, 
Find us on Amazon. Amazon. Don't find us on Amazon. <laughs> I, how many times am I going to do that on this fucking podcast? If you do, though, shoot us a link because <laughs> I want to know how we got there. <laughs> uh, but we are on YouTube and Facebook and iTunes and all, all the other places you can find a podcast, honestly. Um, so find us there and comment us and shit. I'm, I'm on Twitter at Jeff Witty, W-I-D-D-Y. But most importantly, find our <coughs> Facebook and our hilarious, dank-ass memes that are just... They're not nice. ours. We just share them. <laughs> we just share them. Yeah, what, what's what I'm trying to say? There, yeah. If you if you don't get them somewhere people will, else, people will get mad. So. Yes. If you don't have your memes uh, up to date on a daily basis, just go. Yeah, you know, I'm go sure to our you page. Good ones. And yeah. I'm sharing like the like some underground ones. You know, yeah. not, not it's not your average run of the mill. You know, memery. <laughs> If you remember the Circle niche, Game, niche then memes. follow our page because we got a lot of Circle uh, yeah, Game. Uh, well, that's my most mainstream meme that I like to share because uh, <laughs> that's fucking that, hilarious. Because it's for me. It's fucking for me. I fucking find it hilarious. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, so <laughs> let's uh, go into our individual top tens for holiday movies, and starting us this week is it's me. Uh, so <laughs> <Nice>. my <laughs> I was like doing a build up. All right, it's Jade. No, it's not. It's me. Um, <laughs> It's on the edge of my seat, man. Why'd you have to ruin that? <laughs> Someone else is going to get the talk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my number 10 is a total cheat. I think a few of us have cheats in there that are like movies that take place at Christmas but aren't necessarily festive. Everybody has a Die Hard. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. If it's not Die Hard, you know. Exactly. Uh, my number 10 is In Bruges. It's a total reach. <laughs> it's... I'll allow it. I'll allow uh... the fuck it. <laughs> I really just want this to make the fucking bracket so we can debate it against an actual, like, oh, it's in Bruges versus Christmas Story. It doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess Christmas Story is more Christmassy. <laughs> but in Bruges is definitely the one to watch. <laughs> um, right, exactly. Uh, we worked that one out, so pass. <laughs> but in Bruges does it, for those that don't know, it does occur during Christmas. There's like throwaway lines about why are there so many tourists here? Because it's Bruges and it sucks here. And he's like, well, it's Christmas and there's tourists. Um, so deal with it. People, people are, are admiring, you know, all the architecture and stuff like that. Is there a Christmas tree in that movie? I can't remember. Okay. I'm I, like, I'm only like this a quarter way through rewatching it. <laughs> but at the end, I know there's like snow and shit. Cause they're filming a, uh, and, and the little person or whatever is dressed up like a dwarf or whatever. They're filming a Christmas movie. Oh, they I are think. Good. I don't know. The ending's it's it's a blur because I watch it like once a year and for some reason I've just because I've watched so many fucking movies this year, it's just a total blur now, even though I love the shit out of the movie and I'm gonna rewatch it before we record next week. Me too, because um, force in our hand, which is good. This is a yes, good hand to force. That's what yeah. it's all about because JD hasn't seen it and he shouldn't even be on the podcast. Know, because it's of this. so yeah. blasphemic. <laughs> <laughs> look, I'm so, look, y'all should have told me about this from the get go. I'm telling you, it should have been on have. the podcast. You should have just known J D. No, that's look, you gotta just I, know look, these things. Look, at some point, ignorance is excusable, but I guess in this case, it's not. I just, I'm sorry. It's all I can say. Uh, I'm it's, sorry. It's relevant for it. other reasons, too. Like, we're going to talk about it again, probably, inevitably, in the 2008 movies episode that yeah, we're going to do next week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 100% for me. And also, Martin McDonough, McDonough, whatever, uh, who wrote and directed this, he did three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, which is, just came out, excuse me, just came out and is, I think, hitting theaters wider this weekend um so that just came out and that movie is totally like on par with this like the humor is just i mean it's funnier it's it's lighter even though it's a darker topic in a sense yeah, that's funny yeah. um that's but happen. yeah but, i mean the humor is all over the fucking map it's it's so dark it goes places and i just i can't help but laugh every time it's just something about fucked up humor just uh not like fucked up in a violent way but like verbally like i can't believe these people are saying this shit to each other yeah. that type of yeah. And, and Bruce does that. Like Harry uh, Ray Fiennes' character is just saying shit that's off the wall, and you're like, he's totally just fine saying that shit to people. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah, it's, he's he's like the most the least PC scriptwriter <laughs> that we have right now because oh, he's yeah. still he's still throwing around the f bomb that we uh, the, you know alluded to last week. I think uh, it's not fuck, not fuck the other one. Oh, oh. Uh, but he still casually has. He still has his casually has his ignorant characters throw that word around, but it makes sense coming out of their mouths because they're fucking ignorant. Yeah, they're playing that. Ca- yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we're not meant to look at it and just go, ah, it's irony or what? It's cute irony. It's they're <laughs> fucking ignorant characters. Um, but yeah, Three Billboards is fucking awesome. It's a top ten movie so far for me this year, and uh, this one's relevant 
But uh, it does take place in Christmas, and there's that whole little person dressed up as an elf thing for a little bit, I think. I'm pretty sure. I might be misremembering that. <laughs> it's, like, totally not in the movie. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, but, yeah, Colin Farrell's great. This is where I turned around on Colin Farrell, certainly, because uh, before that, it was, yeah. like, Phone Booth and fucking Daredevil and bullshit like that. And gum-chewing oh, Minority Report. Oh, That's my it. God. <laughs> tell me something, Lamar. So let me tell you something. <laughs> God. But in Bruges is fantastic. And Brendan Gleeson, too. This kind of turned me around. Not turned me around, but like kind of made me pay attention to his work. Because yeah. before he was always just bit parts, and here he really anchors the movie, and he's really the heart in it, really. He's great in this movie. He's so he's so fantastic in this. And then he does uh, Calvary with uh, Martin McDonough's brother, uh, John Michael, I think, who wrote and directed Cal- Calvary. Um, I still need to, like, finish that. I barely, like, remember that movie. Like, Yeah, I never I need saw to watch. it. Like I, I said, it's tremendous. I, I have the poster in my head, but I've never, mm-hmm. never seen it. So I have to check it's, it it's out. It's a slow burn drama is my understanding. Um, but uh, about a relevant topic with a priest that, you know, did stuff in his past. Oh. Um, so, yeah. I. Anyway, and Bruges is great. <laughs> that's my <laughs> number 10. Makes no sense. Right. That's my number 10. Uh, it's a signature Jeff tangent where I just go, anyway... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my number 10's in Bruges. Um, next up, we have... I'm switching documents, and it's JD next. Oh, sweet. Um, I didn't put my uh, my cheat movies at number 10. I don't think I could have justified putting oh, okay. this above anything else, because it's not, not, not a great good movie. movie. Oh. It's not a really good movie, um, it. but it's, uh, okay. it's, it's Jingle All the Way, man. Give me that Turbo Man action. Oh, Schwarzenegger. Jake Lloyd. Yeah, I'll, 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 what I'll have you done? done. <laughs> Dude, sorry, I'm sorry. And, no, man, I get it. This is, uh, yeah, this, I mean, this, this is like 90s. This is one that, yeah, as a kid, I mean, I knew it was terrible. I knew what I was watching. Sure. Right? I was very aware. Dude, but I like Little some... Nicky, so I, don't talk to me about, like, liking bad <laughs> Oh, my God. Dude, it's Kevin okay, Nealon yeah. with, with tits with on tits his head. With tits on his head? Gold. Come on, that's never not <laughs> that's funny. That's great. That's Ugh. great. Yeah, I, I, I consider Little Nicky as, like, that was the moment when I knew Sandler was like oh, just kind of totally plummeting, starting the plummeting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I still oh, enjoy yeah. Little Nicky too, Wait, was though. Little Nicky that was before or after Waterboy. It was after I. Believe. It was after, yeah, yeah. Because oh, Waterboy wow, was okay. good, like immediately yeah, after. I know. I know. So I thought yeah. Waterboy was a step in the right direction. No, but it came before. Okay, wow, crazy. Yeah, Little Nicky was definitely and then it the was like longest yard and uh, a was, bunch uh, of other uh, yawners uh, like that one. Click. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like click. Click made me cry like my ass too, off. I don't. But click made me cry just, so hard. <laughs> it was it was weird, weird Adam Sandler for me. Like yeah. I, I felt weird having other emotions other than comedy. Oh like, sure, it's just, sure. I yeah. That. It's like but when I did you're like Unstruck Glove, and you're like, am I watching a great movie right now? <laughs> yeah. What? What is this shit? <laughs> this, is, this is a weird. Like, Thanks, like, Paul Thomas great, Anderson. Like, I'm la- like this. Right? Like, there is not a laugh to be had in this movie. <laughs> like, yeah. No, none. Uh, and that's what confused me. I was a dumb kid when I watched that movie the first time. There was no way I appreciated that movie at all. No, I Punch saw it my first time just like two or three years ago, and I was like, this is fucking awesome. Like, yeah, that movie's so great, but like, and it stuck with me since my first time I watched it. But the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, this yeah, is going to be hilarious. Ah! And then it wasn't funny at all, so I was it's bummed out. He's going to like freak out on everybody, right? <laughs> <laughs> You know, do his thing, but I guess not. Do his regular freakout thing, right? Yeah. Anyway, you picked. Uh, I've told totally. you how, a movie you picked. <laughs> Jingle all oh, the yeah. way. Uh, Jingle, Jingle all the way. way. And you know, I'm not starring I, I Adam can Sandler at all. A lot of yeah. not Adam <laughs> no. Sandler. Not at all. Sinbad and Schwarzenegger, very similar though. Similar uh, calibers. It's there. Sinbad, Sinbad in this movie. Um, yeah, Sinbad is like the mailman that's uh, disgruntled and is like kind of um, Schwarzenegger's competition, if you will, the personal competition. Of getting that Turbo Man doll, like they they get into a bunch of scruffs together at different locations trying to find one. So, man, it's a fucking ridiculous movie. I just love, I I, I just love watching it, being like Jesus. I can't believe I watched this like twenty times as a kid. Like this right. is so bad because Jake Lloyd. I'm sorry, dude. That that's, I saw the uh, trailer a billion times because I'm pretty sure it was before a movie I watched all the time. I can't yeah, remember what oh, the yeah. movie was. I've never yeah. seen that movie, but I, I know I've seen the trailer a million times too. So it was definitely on the beginning of it. You, know, you don't need. Uh, you don't need to watch right. it. You can. You can yeah, definitely. You know. You can definitely skip it. <laughs> Seriously. So what? Uh, what about it now? Like, yeah, what does it stand out now to you? Like, just like, is it um, more the nostalgia or like the? Can you, can you still find some humor in it if you revisited it? 
I can I can find some humor in it. I just think it's it's funny to watch people flip out over a fucking toy because we well, especially that Schwarzenegger. Shit. Yeah, um, he's... yeah, and it's just because he's he just plays the typical dad that doesn't spend enough time at home and you know, or spends all his time at work literally and forgets to buy the toy and. So get because he's doing everything at the last minute, yeah, he's got to get the most popular <laughs> toy ever. I got to get the um, toy. I, I am yeah, get you know, it. there's a there's a semi uh, adorable moment at the end, I guess, but it kind of I don't know, man. I I do like the festivity of it, like because it's all mm-hmm. about Christmas. Oh, yeah. Phil Hartman's in it actually. I think it was one of his last. Phil Hartman movies. is in it. Yeah. Um, he's he's actually really really. He's really good in that one. He plays like Bill the Harvard's creepy, everything. overbearing yes. neighbor that like all the women in the neighborhood are like, oh, I think his name's like Ted or whatever. I can and they all come in. I am like envisioning the role right now. Like, not that I've seen it, but like, He's I like, okay. think he would play it. Exactly. <laughs> well, if you want some eggnog, just uh, come on over. <laughs> hey, neighbor, what are you doing over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, watch it for Phil. Watch it for Phil. Sure. Should we watch a sequel or no? There's, <laughs> there's not a sequel. Yeah, there is. Came out like three years ago. What is no. it? Jingle all the way more over? More no, it's just way two. Over? It's yeah. just two, man. Let's not be complicated about it. It does star. <laughs> it does star our our personal uh, hero and favorite stand up comedian of the show, Larry the Cable Guy. So, oh don't Jesus ever put that Christ! On me. <laughs> don't, don't even joke about that. That's not funny to me. Oh, that's great. Uh, and it was co produced by WWE Studios, so it had like a wrestler in it and shit. <laughs> oh, get out of here. Yeah. No bullshit. Wow. Yeah. No bullshit, huh? That's some that's some good bad movie trivia right there. That's, Every that's episode awesome. it's all about wrestling, isn't it, Jeff? Huh? <laughs> Every <laughs> single waking minute of my it all, life it all, is all about wrestling. It's like it's like the Velma like theory back on Cartoon Network, like everything that we talked about on our podcast can tie back to wrestling in some way. It really can. Well, the whole reason you. I started this is because I listen to Jericho podcast all the time. No, it's not. I listen to other exactly. podcasts too. That'd be hilarious. Well, you just stuck with that, though. <laughs> I listen to Jericho and the way he presents his ads. No, fucking no. <laughs> Fuck off. Anyway, uh, that was JD's number 10 was Jingle All the Way for some reason, and it probably make the 16, and I'll have to fucking watch that shit. Yes! Uh, so, Kyle, what's your number 10? Uh, my number 10 is going to be a much funner, or more fun, whatever, watch uh, Gremlins. I love this movie, man. What yeah, a dark... Yeah. Eh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Yeah. I was gonna yeah. launch into it. I like the. Eh, I, eh, eh. Can you give me a second? Yeah, yeah, sorry, I wasn't ready there. Uh, please. Yeah. <laughs> I was this too busy eating food after pushes. I, I don't know yet. I don't know how this is gonna shake out, but that brings me to my number nine. And my number nine, number nine, uh, number nine. is Beatles reference. Uh, is Home Alone Two: Lost in New York? Mm. All right. Wow. Uh, a bunch of sequel fans here, huh? Yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm a sequel fan. I'm 100% mm. a sequel fan. So that brings us back to JD and his number nine. <laughs> All right. All right. Why? Well, I, I guess I have two treats in a row. I could put the uh, I could put the surprise one here. I could put it at eight. It could go either way. Either way. What should I do? Either way. Either way. Either way. Either way's fine. Either way. Um, you know what? I'm going to do it now because I think I need some redemption after my last pick, and this is this is going to be a good one. Uh, you guys ever heard of a little, you know? little movie called uh kiss kiss bang bang ever yeah i love maybe. that movie and uh movie. it uh it takes this place porno yeah it is actually yeah it's a good one <laughs> it's a good one yeah. um no i actually stumbled upon a uh like a top 50 list that said this was actually a christmas movie and i'm like what the no get the fuck out yeah it, it, totally, christmas. it totally is yeah he's stealing the it's xbox on for with his my nephew membership. Yay. and uh man i uh i watched it and, yeah it's pretty christmas heavy in the first like 20 minutes yep um yeah. Harmony's wearing the uh, sexy Mrs. Claus outfit. I fell in uh, love with that actress part of it. in that movie. Oh, I like, love Bridget. Uh, Is it Bridget Monaghan? No, that's Not uh, Michelle Monaghan. Michelle, Michelle Monaghan. Yeah, that's oh, right. She's so beautiful. Good for her. I like. I just like her. Her like quirky, just or I guess more quirky well, I, attitude. It's, it's 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 a whole package, man. That's great. <laughs> Absolutely. And and uh, the lead character said it best. Not like that matters, but look at those stems. Like yeah. that's why. That's why. That's why she's here. Uh, oh, she's here. Can't get can't you get away with saying that kind of shit. And I'm not comfortable with this. Uh, oh, look, I'm just look. I'm just quoting what the movie said. <laughs> That's true. You are uh, just, just quoting the movie. But yeah, this was uh, this was one that didn't come to mind like organically. It just I saw it on a list. I'm like, yeah, you know what? That deserves to be uh, deserves to be talked about. That's a Christmas movie, even though it's not. 
I, I, know, I love this pick uh, a lot. Uh, I, I battled with it being my, like, uh, you know, my Hail Mary die, die Hard type pick or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wasn't uh, even in my but, honorable mentions. I don't know why. Huh. That's weird. Means, it's weird, it's right? as much about Christmas as in Bruges. You know? <laughs> it absolutely yeah. fucking is. It's just not Maybe one that even though so, I've watched. Maybe even there's a fucking Christmas tree that I definitely remember. <laughs> Well, guess what? I'm plugging that shit in there. Uh, yeah, there you go. I'm there glad you go. that both of these movies are in there because uh, these are not only like good movies that you can watch and get that still like Christmassy, wintry feel or whatever, but they're fucking fantastic movies in Bruges and uh, this one yep. that is. So, uh, Ab- fucking good, man. so fruitless. Yeah, totally. Oh, totally. Well, I have that shit on DVD, man. So I'll watch it and complain about the quality the entire time. <laughs> I tried to find mine. I don't know where the fuck it is. It must be in like the one box with like layer cake and all this other shit. I'm missing. Ooh, it might. I'm looking at layer cake right now. It's what a god, man. Oh, that movie I still haven't watched. Why are you guys still bringing that I, up? You know what? I know. That's why I'm the that's why god man right now. That's your in Bruges. <laughs> watch it. <laughs> Super good. Uh, yeah, I love Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, and it's Shane. We could just literally put number nine, Shane Black, because all of his movies are Christmassy. Um, oh, true. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. I remember like Nice me. Guys ends with "Hey, it's Christmas," and you're like, "Oh, well, it's Shane Black movie." There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's number nine is Iron Man three. Uh, <laughs> oh no! I would never do that. <laughs> People hate that movie so much. I just yeah, I feel uh, a certain way about that movie, and not. In the way that everybody else feels, like I hate it because they ruined the man. I don't care about any of that. I just man, really. That stuff. That's the stuff that didn't bother me. I don't care. So what? Hmm. I don't know who the Mandarin is. Like, so he ended up being an actor guy. It doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> oh, that's okay. the cool thing about not being invested in like, uh, like I wasn't. I don't know a lot of Iron Man characters and stuff like right. that. So that I think reveal, a lot of like, people wasn't devastating. The, uh, they viewed it as the equivalent of, like, a Joker to the Batman, like, he's the arch nemesis in the comics, so a lot of people were butthurt about that. That's yeah, what, that's, I get that's, that. That's the, yeah, exactly. I get why people are mad. Like, that's just not, that's not what makes the, that's not what breaks the movie for me, personally. Uh, that's stuff that's Yeah, there's a lot of other stuff to complain about in that Weird, because that's the only thing that bothers me. <laughs> Weird. Is it really? Yes. yes. Yeah. That's the yeah. only thing that bothers me, is like, damn, the Mandarin could have been this, like, badass, like, ultimate thing that survives several movies, and, uh, and it's just, hello, Trevor, Trevor Slattery, and yeah. whatever. It's, <laughs> it bothers me. <laughs> it's I just, not, yeah, I have no, like, I have no frame though. of reference. They could have, like, that could have been right from the comics, and I'm like, oh, great, okay, whatever, it's stupid. <laughs> That's, I mean, it's not cool, whatever. <laughs> not a great reveal, you know? No, yeah, not the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I am admittedly, a de- I mean, it's not like super high on my list. Don't get me wrong, but I am a defender of Iron Man three. Uh, I am the defender of Iron Man. <laughs> Probably the only person I know, uh, I know of. Yeah. That's pretty much it. It's just me. I'm on an Island on an Iron Man three Island. It's not a good Island to be on. Get on, on like Iron Island. Get on uh, like a different Island. <laughs> Dr. Strange Island is a lot of fun. People hate that movie. That's a fun movie to defend. Uh, all right, so here we are. At Kyle's number nine. Uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang was JD's number nine. I'm actually pretty hyped to watch that movie again. Uh, yes. So, Kyle, what's your uh, number nine? Uh, my number nine is Trading Places. Uh, uh, I never heard of it. Okay, good. I'm just kidding. I'm glad. Uh, I just watched uh, this for the first time, like yesterday, and uh, yeah, I've never seen it. I know about just, it, but I've never seen it. Ooh, you're, never this seen is it. you're gonna laugh your butt off. <laughs> It's Sorry. such a good movie, dude. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, it holds up out the anus. Anus. At the anus. Anus start. Uh, yeah, Dan Aykroyd uh, being drunk is like, uh, as uh, Santa Claus at the end is like, like, great. That's like good fucking shit to me. Like, I just, I yes. laugh my ass off. I remember having memories sitting on the couch with my dad and just like, this is one of our favorite movies to watch like during Christmas time. So it was always on TNT or whatever, whatever would come on. Uh, and we would always watch it, and that scene, the scene with the gorilla at the end, and all that shit, I mean, like, we still laugh about that when we talk about, like, stuff on the phone, like, to this day. Like, oh, you remember that movie? Like, you know, like, uh, some dads like, talk, and sons talk about baseball. Like, it's usually, like, movies, like, for us, like, movies used to watch when we were growing up, and this one, like, comes up often, and I just, like, mm-hmm. I really, like, I really adore the memories I hold of this movie, but I, and also just, like, it, it's always a movie that just comes around at Christmas. It's not a movie I watch year-round or even think about year-round. Uh, but, uh, even though it's not very Christmassy, it's just like, I don't know, it's wintry, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, it's, uh, it, for whatever reason, that's when it always aired, uh, and, 
It's just super funny, you know? It's, it's a hilarious. classic, yeah. the classic switcheroo where they take uh, two dudes and switch their lives. Eddie Murphy, Man, who's kind of like a... Karate people bruise on the inside. You don't know shit about karate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Eddie Murphy, he's uh, living on the streets, and Dan Aykroyd, he's yes. a super s- silver spoon in the mouth, rich, snooty guy, you know, and they trade He's so great at that role, too. Yeah. Oh, he's so good at being just a shithead. Uh and the way that their lives like swap and then begin to like transform into the other person's life, it's just great, you know. It's uh, it's yeah. a good feel good movie at the end. Uh, yeah, nice little lesson. Yeah, <laughs> uh, don't let me do yeah. that again. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're doing it way better than me. Uh, don't ever let me do that again. <laughs> my friend, I, my friend, uh, my friend, I used to work with uh, at almost like on a on a daily basis, if not weekly. We just randomly do that when we were all sitting there waiting for a phone call to come in. He just goes, yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck was that? And I had no idea. He didn't tell me it was from Trading Places until I texted him. I watched Trading Places, and I was like, now I know why you kept doing the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great character. Like, just literally, he doesn't say any other lines other than yeah to what his friend is saying. It's so yeah. great. Uh, Eddie Murphy's great in this. This is like. This is top form, Eddie. For me, yeah, man. this is absolutely like, uh, you cool. know. Beverly Hills Cop Trading Places, it's up there. Like, yeah. it is his and it's like, and it, it, it reminds, like, you know, it's a lot about the corporate world and stuff like that, and they go even go to a corporate Christmas party or a corporate event. You know, like, so it just, it just feels, I don't know, very appropriate December watch, and you're going to get some good laughs out of it. So Absolutely. Yeah. And Jamie Lee Curtis boobs. Dude, she's hot. <laughs> they too. were. I mean, beautiful. They were great. Whatever we're allowed to say now. I mean, I don't know how her boobs look now, so they could be shitty, but, um... <laughs> It's a horrible comment to me. <laughs> yeah. We're suspending Jeff from Inner Tournament Champions Podcast because he made comments we we, about boobies. We, we didn't agree with anything that he said. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that was uh, Kyle's number eight was tra- – or number nine, sorry, was Trading Places, which is a fantastic movie. Uh, it's it's one that I finished and I was like, that. I'm going to watch that movie several times again. I can just already tell. Good one. Cool. Um so I okay. My number eight is one. I don't think it's on your list at all. Uh, but it's uh, it's an obligatory almost. But uh, it's a Wonderful Life. Oh yeah, for sure. Anybody have it on the list? No, I don't. No. Well, apparently it's not wonderful then. So fuck you. Guys. It is. It uh, is. <laughs> just kidding. I don't think I've ever seen it. So JD, you have seen it. Oh yeah, I've seen okay. it. It just it just wasn't one like all the others on my list. At least had a uh, recurring watch with. Mm-hmm. regularity with my family so that just gotcha. wasn't one that we like had to put on every year so no yeah and it was never one for me even though i knew i consciously knew it was airing on abc all the time yeah all um, the time it's everywhere. yeah exactly but like every well every, i say all the time i just mean seasonally um but uh but but yeah this was one i saw like for the first time sat down and watched the entire way through like for this podcast and it's a really great movie spoilers <laughs> it's a really yes. great movie uh, it is surprise good. And there's, it's kind of surprising to me. Um, it's not surprising when you consider the name of the movie, but it's surprising to me how little Christmas is in it. But obviously, he has that re- revelation about his life not being as shitty as he thinks it is on Christmas. Right. So that's helpful towards the Christmas cause and the joy of Christmas influencing his uh, joy in life and stuff. But yeah. uh, it is overall just covers his entire life, the entire movie. And there's not that much Christmas until the it's beginning and the end really. That's more Christmassy. Um, so that might come up in the debates, but still I felt obligated to put this in here because it's just a well-made movie and it's a classic. And um, this is the one that people always go to when the season comes around. Um, or a lot, at least a lot of people do. And uh, J- Jimmy Stewart is Jimmy Stewart? Is that who it is? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Uh, it's Christmas. It's Christmas. Oh, I'll kill myself now. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. I love I love his performance in this. There's a part where he's like, um, he's on a date with the person that he's going to really just end up marrying later on and having kids with. And um, and and she like has a robe on for some reason. I'm trying to remember the exact circumstances. My memory is foggy. Again, I've seen a lot of movies. Um, but uh, she has a robe on and she like... They get distracted by uh, like a, a guy coming out of a house and going, "Hey, what are y'all doing out here?" And she loses her robe, and after he like accidentally steps on it, and she's in the bushes hiding naked. And <laughs> and the right. way he looks up and he's like, "This is an interesting situation." It's hilarious to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great moment, and it just it's just his Jimmy Stewart delivery that the oh, this is just a, oh, this is an interesting situation uh, yeah. makes me laugh. Anyway, great moment. And uh, good movie. Uh, th- this is the whole when a bell rings and angel gets its wings shit. 
This is where that comes from, and that's this oh, was, that's this was alluded right. to in another movie we're talking. We're going to talk about. Yeah, that's um, in Hebrew Hammer. That's yeah, like a exactly. huge plot point. <laughs> exactly. Uh, they keep trying to like unbrainwash the kids that are yeah. suddenly Christianized <laughs> into uh, celebrating Christmas. Oh my god! And you a bell rings an angel. Oh, snap out of it! Snap out of it! Snap out of it, chicken! <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good though. It's it's good. It's worthy of a spot in my list for sure. Um, I feel like it would have been sacrilegious cool. to <laughs> exclude it. Yeah, no, no offense to JD it, so... or anything, because I know it's not in your list. But uh, yeah, being... no, not at all. This I, is I feel like people would know, be like, "This guy's a it's... cinephile. Does that? It's a wonderful life." Eight would probably be too low for these people, honestly. That people that the people that might complain about this placement. Hey, don't uh, let people's uh, expectations of being a cinephile dictate your list. That's you know what? Good point. You know what? Fuck it. It's not even on my list anymore. You're like, you know what? I'm putting all the movies that I secretly love on there, and it's like all the <laughs> shitty movies that you never told us about that you like, and it's like, oh, Jeff, you shouldn't have released the floodgates on that one. <laughs> Uh, so that's my number eight, and now we're on JD's number eight. Cool. Uh, still another cheap movie for me because I put Die Hard at number eight too. Why not have two on one list? list? Well, this is a. Uh, it's not my list, but this is one that uh, a lot of people like threw out there. Kyle put out like we're in this group together. Best Christmas movie out, of all time. He put out like this, you know, general. Hey, what's everybody's favorites? And they a lot of them threw out Die Hard, like. Yeah. That's the ultimate Christmas movie. So I know I hear it's it so not a lone often opinion. that I that's literally why I didn't put it on my list because Ugh, it's the one I watch every year. It's the best. I, I, <laughs> oh my I, god! I, that mentality ruins Christmas for me. Thanks everybody. <laughs> oh, there's one guy with an AK and he's wearing a Santa hat. It's fucking awesome, like, dude. Yeah. They're at a Christmas party. It's Christmas. It's all people <laughs> right. like Aquaman. My man, <laughs> my man. Oh, those people. God. Sorry, I'm the one that, of this of these three. I'm the one that saw Justice League, and I'm gonna be uh, honest, man. I probably won't see it in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, man. Don't blame me one bit. Uh, I just but, I don't want to. I don't yeah, want to spend money. Here, I, think, I don't want to spend money on it, and uh, it sounds like a gigantic waste of time. So. <laughs> if my movie pass arrives by the time it uh, or before it comes out on Blu-ray or whatever or download. I might go see it, but I'm not going to actually like spend currency on it. I, yeah, I did just because I wanted to see it like opening night, just so I can tell people at work that it sucked. Uh, I didn't yeah. want to. I want to be like, a part I didn't of that want so it to bad. suck. Does that make me? Does that make me shitty that I want to see it just so I could be a part of shitting on it? Like, because <laughs> it makes kind of does because like so you, that's why I'm not seeing it yeah. immediately because I know that that's the only reason I want to see it. And I'm like yes. I'm not that guy, but I am. I'm just trying to yeah, like, exactly. Put it like, and that like, plays into <laughs> the people that always say that there's DC haters, and it's like, well, I mean, yeah, but that's because it's bad. Like when it's yeah. bad, I'm, it's I'm allowed bad. to be like, oh, it's fucking. It. It's like the Transformers movie. I'm not going to see those. Um, well, certainly, certainly, I'm not going to pay to see those. But like, I'm not going to see those because I want to see them. I want to see them so I can shit on them with other people. Like, yeah. like, oh, look at this dumb fucking part and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Justice League, or at least the DCEU, whatever Snyder touches in the DCEU. Uh, tends to be those things for me. It's similar to Transformers. Where, but at the same time, I give a shit about these characters. It's Batman, it's Superman, it's all these people. And Wonder Woman especially, after her great solo movie, by the way. Yeah. Um, but their batting average is so low that I just say, just fucking scrap everything creatively and just, you know what? Just Are... Wonder Woman's fine. You can leave her solo movie and be like, that's the DCEU for now. And I'm sure everyone would be like, all right. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you a really specific question, Jeff, about Justice League? Yeah, sure. Are there talking bubbles at any point in that movie? Talking bubbles? What? Like, like comic book talking bubbles? Like when someone's talking, it's like coming up like a like a comic book bubble? James Wan made a very weird like uh, uh, tweet today or whatever about really? something about like, don't worry, guys, there's not going to be like talking bubbles in my in my Aquaman. And I had no idea if that was like a... No, that's that. That was not in Justice League. I don't know what that's a reference. What's he to. talking okay. about? Yeah. yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. Maybe he's talking. I mean, the only th- movies I can kind of think of that are like kind of like satirical comic book movies, like Kick Ass or something, but that's not even in Kick Ass in my recollection. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about them. I don't. Not to de- not to derail. That's that's. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's a weird is. comment, and I don't know about uh. I, I mean, I really don't know about Aquaman, and and it's it is he's- interesting because Aquaman in the movie Justice League, like. He's in an interesting position where he's hasn't visited Atlantis at all. So, yeah, I'm intrigued to see, you know, how that pans if out. Ever? I guess in a movie w- directed by James Wan specifically. Um, like he's I never guess, been to Atlantic. 
Yeah, the first time that he goes there is in Justice League, and well, Amber Heard is like the one of the protectors or some shit of of Atlantis, and she's like, uh, uh, "How come you never visit us?" She's giving him a lecture and stuff, like you know, um, you're like an heir to the throne, you never come here before, you're a piece of shit and all that stuff. Um, cool. So I mean, there's at least some type of story there to tell, but it was weird that he knew exactly where it was. <laughs> <laughs> you knew exactly where it was. That I've never been to. Okay. I've never been to Atlantis, but oh, there it is. It's right there. Good for I him. think he just, yeah. I assume he just followed the bad guy noises or some shit, but I mean, this mo- there's movies full of like vague plot holes that you just can't think too hard on. It's one of those that like some DC fans will just tell you, just turn your brain off and enjoy it. But uh, sometimes you just can't. And uh, it's, I mean, unfortunately, that's how I watch movies, so fucking suck it. That's why my. <laughs> That's why my number nine was Home Alone 2. Um, <laughs> but we're on to uh, Kyle's. Uh, my number eight, to, to let everybody know where we last left off, my number eight was It's a Wonderful Life, and JD's is Die Hard, and we totally digress. Yeah, um, but there's not a whole lot of Christmas dude, stuff I'm, to it's, say it's, about It's a lot my yeah. fault, too. I'm, I'm, throwing, I'm throwing this off. Well, I'll yeah, do. and if it would be weird if I didn't talk about Justice League after I did see it, and everybody's like, well, what would be his opinion on Justice League be? Well, I want to uh, know what that's all about. Well, of course he hates it, or whatever. I'm sure the haters of us don't listen to us, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> or they, some people literally just listen to people just so they can shit on them. So That's true. Just like how but, like, we But how can see they do that so when, when yeah, it was like, that's kind of like you're criticizing somebody doing the same thing, just to point it in a different direction. Exactly. Well, I'm, hey, I, I'm all about it, guys. Bring it. <laughs> bring it. Bring it on. Uh, comment us on YouTube that whatever the fuck you want us to improve on so we can not listen to your advice. Uh, but yeah, Die Hard is a, is one I just watched actually like last week or the weekend or whatever. Um, again, of course. Yeah, of course. I'm not, again. I'm not a weirdo. I haven't seen it. <laughs> you just, you saw two and loved it so much. You couldn't watch the others. I have is that to what, go back. Is that what I it was? Gotta go back. Okay. Gotta go back. Uh, gotta go back. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this one doesn't have Dennis friends in it. Like, oh man. <laughs> I did. With a Vengeance was one that I watched a lot as a kid, especially I love that one. all the time. Sam Jackson, um, dude. Getting yeah, that Sam motherfucker Jackson. count going hey, early from the Zeus. get-go. My name's Zeus. Uh, Not, hey, Zeus. <laughs> Thunderbolt lightning up your ass. Zeus. Like, it's just... It's, cool. uh, it's good. But Die Hard is still... That's the originator, man. And it's... For me, like, it's one that I... When I revisit it, I'm like, yeah, other movies do this better now. But it is the originator, so I can't take yeah, that away absolutely. from the movie. For sure. For yeah. sure. That hurts awesome. It's super yeah. awesome. I'm a huge fan of the original Die Hard. Um, like you said, it, it became the template for action movies going forward. Uh, right. And Bad Guys, you know, with Hans Gruber. We talked about yeah, that. Yeah, Gruber's episode. awesome, for sure. Um, yeah, Gruber, you know, yeah. so, uh, you know, it was just a really, Car- it's a Car- still to this Car- day kind of like a pillar in the action movie genre. So, I mean, mm-hmm. just the fact that it takes place in Christmas uh, just means we get to watch it. It was it released awesome. on Christmas. I think well, on it, Christmas we get Day. To watch, we get to watch a fucking kick-ass shooting christmas movie every year now yeah so yeah. like thank you Die Hard. that's awesome <laughs> Christmas sure. does drive the plot so it's more present than like in bruges where it's just like in the background yeah right but like that's the entire reason that he's visiting and that's the entire reason they have a party yeah um how 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 uh that's pretty good <laughs> snape now i have <laughs> Harry, Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. Uh, <laughs> all right, so now we're at Kyle's number eight. Uh, we're here, man. We're talking about the Hebrew Hammer. Yeah, oh, nice. I, I had to sneak it on here. Uh, Boo! What a what Sorry, a funny movie a reference. And like, you, know, you think boy. about it, like, Kyle, Kyle, what the Hebrew Hammer has to do with Christmas? That's where you're incorrect because it's a movie about Christmas being stolen by what, like Saint Nick's. Evil son or brother? I don't. I don't really remember. Andy Dick. Andy Dick's the new Santa Claus now. Yes. Uh, and he's, <laughs> he's. There's no more. You know. He's. He's. He's making Christmas like the only holiday or something like that. I forget what yes. the whole plot is. Uh, is that yeah, right? Yeah, Am I really it. guessing yeah. it right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he wants uh, to convert everybody, like mind brainwash people. To he wants to brainwash everybody, like into Christmas, converting yeah. into Christmas. Yeah. Uh, so they call in like a shaft, like character who's the hebrew hammer who's like the jewish shaft you know and he just goes around to save christmas and it's fucking awesome he gets like 
like like what Kwanzaa Squad or something like that to help yeah. them, and, and they're like, basically Black Panthers. Yeah. yeah, they're basically Black, and it's just fucking. It's so fucking ridiculous, mm-hmm. but it couldn't be more about Christmas. Yeah, you know? <laughs> so like when you're watching it, it's very very appropriate. Yeah, uh, for the time and everything, and it's just hilarious, man. It's the dumbest fucking stupid comedy that you could ever watch. You know, if you're, if you're just into that, uh, it's actually a Comedy Central straight to Comedy Central movie, I believe. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. It came out around the same time or after their first movie, Porn and Chicken. So it's just like, if y'all ever watch those, like, that really, like, short stint where, like, Comedy Central was, like, putting out movies. I'm pretty sure this was a Comedy Central movie. Um, that wouldn't uh, surprise me because I remember, uh, like, it going straight to DVD for sure. Yeah, it, it was never in theaters. Uh, mm-hmm. Man, what, it's just a funny movie. Uh, I'm really, I'm glad you got around to watching it, Jeff. I'm yeah, really it's funny, dude. Uh, it's, yeah, okay. it's... Andy Dick, sure, he's a fucking one of those weirdos that's being, uh, you know, pointed out for like sexual harassment. Hell, he got kicked off of a movie like a well, few we, days we, after we the Weinstein that, thing. Like we knew that he was yeah. like this, though. You know, like that's we just... did. He wasn't. He was upfront about all. This. He was <laughs> really upfront. Jimmy like, Kimmel just, for all this. Who I am. This is how I am. Uh, okay. And that's what he said in interviews after where he got kicked off of a film recently. He was like, "That's just who I am, guys." Like. Yeah. And I'm over here kind of like, fuck you, but Does also make- I enjoy your work. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the Andy Dick show? God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> he is really funny here, though. There's a lot yeah, of great hilarious. stuff where it's like just random lines that you're like, what the fuck did they just say? And yeah, it's great. Um, Super on pick. the nose, stereotypical jokes also. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, he's like, that's in tone like- with like black exploitation because it's an homage to all of the black exploitation yeah, films absolutely. and stuff. Uh, it's, and it's they very- played on stereotypes much like they're doing in Hebrew Hammer. So Yeah. Well, and like Black Dynamite did it recently also. Yeah. Uh, if, y'all, if y'all have seen that movie, I've also very funny, it. very much like this movie. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just, I like, I like, I don't know. I like these like exploitation like spoofs, if you will. So yeah. Uh, it's playing great. on the stereotypes and stuff. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we're at my number seven now. Oh, shit. Uh, number seven. Just cue the music. It's Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> All right, that's my number seven. So number seven for JD. Um, This was a push from earlier, but now we're here. It's uh, it's Gremlins, man. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's an honorable yeah, mention for me. Right. And that was uh, Kyle's number ten, right? Yeah, my number ten. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. Man so many memories watching that movie uh, yeah. with my family and uh, mm-hmm. being both equally like, cause, cause I, I love Gizmo. Like he's amazing. I want, I want a dog like a Corgi or something and a name in Gizmo. Cause like, that's just that level of adorableness just translates to a Corgi for me. Sure. Um, poisonally. But uh, I was also <laughs> terrified by this fucking movie. Like yeah. the, the, way that, the way that they, the, I guess their second form or, or I guess the gremlins are the second form. Mogwai is the first, first form. form. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, just the rules and like you, you know that everything's gonna go bad. But I didn't. I was a kid when I saw this, so I hadn't like watched the trailer or anything. I didn't know what to expect. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it scared the piss out of me. The way that yeah. they looked. I can uh, but your parents let you watch that as a kid. I, I had to. Yeah, sneak, you know, I, I had to I sneak around to watch that one. I can't believe they did either. Like <laughs> I was relatively sheltered, but I think this is one that my mom didn't quite know where it was going. Before yeah. she showed it to me, uh, and I can see that it's like it's, it's an like, unexpectedly well, dark uh, comedy. Flames yeah, 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 yeah. already in the air, so we might as well yep. just uh, let this ride out. Yeah, man, I, I want to see what you, what was going through your brain when she launches into that story about her how her dad dies delivering <laughs> presents in the chimney, <laughs> and you're just sitting there like, what the what fuck? the fuck? <laughs> And your parents are like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, what are we doing? What have we We've done? We've gone so wrong. Like that, that's, maybe that's the moment. They're like, well, he was a good kid. And then we showed him very much. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna, we messed up with this one already. <laughs> Never coming back. I, I watched this movie for the first time like two years ago, man. And what? Really? Uh, it holds up big time. Let that's me tell it you. Does. I loved it. I loved it. Like, Did you watch I, the sequel? Cause that No. Dude, I'm I'm told it's lighter, so I'm like, Ooh, I'm not the interested. The sequel is like you don't have to super but... meta. It's like yeah. very smart. Like it's like it's funny. It's like a comedy. Like it's a straight up comedy. It's, it loses all of its darkness, but like it picks up other genres. Like in, you know what I mean? Instead, yeah, it's just yeah, uh, it's the, fun, the dude. Sca- it's the good. scale's a little bigger because they're in like a like a they're skyscraper that's got a news network and. I mean, there's yeah. there's a lot of really good moments. Well, and they stumble on sure. the sets, and set, you know, people are wearing. Con- it's just fucking. Yeah, it's a studio. Movie. And uh, oh man, uh, yeah, it's a great movie, man. Don't don't let people like uh, turn you off just because it's not as dark or whatever. 
It's not as good, but it's still really enjoyable. Like, yeah. that's the one that my mom should have showed me first. Yeah. Like, uh, way later that, down the Like, road. that's a comical, like, fun movie. It's still, like, rated R, I would say, because like, there's a lot of, like, It might be sexuality. 80s PG-13, which it is, is like, the, the equivalent. But, like, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, like, sexuality, and there's a lot... Of, they don't they don't hold back from the jokes or anything like that. It's just not, like, tonally as dark. Right. People still get bit and killed, and, like, shit happens in that movie. Yeah, but it's got that cute little googly-eyed gremlin that's, yeah, like, yeah. evil He's... but adorable, so it's like he crazy. kept his adorableness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm crazy. <laughs> it's a good movie, dude. I'm, I'm super happy it's in both of y'all's lists, uh, so we're gonna... It's gonna yeah. land in the tournament. By the way, I just saw the, uh, the link that uh, JD shared the link in our chat about the Justice Oh, Ky- League, Kyle shared it. James Wan. Oh, Kyle did. Sorry. Um, but uh, y'all are the same guy, so whatever. Um, but I clicked on it, and I'm remembering now that when Amber Heard was talking to Aquaman, um, they, like, blew – like, they expanded the water so they could talk in gravity or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, they kind of, like, made it a Their giant air bubble. sound could travel through the air. Yeah. Oh. They made it a giant air bubble. So he's just saying talk. we're not fucking doing that. Yeah, he's saying we're not doing that, basically. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I can see how, out of context, you're thinking like as a comic book movie. Yeah. Like, well, I oh, just read the tweet. You can only you can only that? read so much out of a tweet. You know, I'm just like, yeah. what is that in a talking bubble? What does that yeah, mean? Exactly. <laughs> like words come out of the bubble. Yeah, and they like talk? a comic it's really book, weird. like like yeah. where it's like wham, or oh, I'm glad <laughs> to see you, or I don't know. I mean, better an air bubble than like those shitty toys from Sharper Image that didn't yeah. work, where like you're trying to talk underwater in a pool, like like oh cool, yeah, I understood that. <laughs> um, uh, I was gonna say I didn't mind the the giant air bubble because like I was like yeah how else are they gonna fucking talk like you can yeah. manipulate water why not do a giant see air that's like the talk? furthest thing from my mind like it, when worrying about Aquaman yeah. movie is how they're gonna talk <laughs> exactly <laughs> and if like, they're I'm just talk like, underwater like I'm, I'm fucking out of the theater I don't want to and you know guys it. I don't want to I don't want to stir the pot but Zack Snyder had no dreams of that happening that was all Joss Whedon. No, so, it was all, yeah, if you yeah, hated it, was it, all, it was Joss Whedon. Yep. If, you, if you hated anything about Justice League, Joss Whedon was, did that part. Yeah, I mean, it's just not <laughs> Snyder's original shitty, I mean, just original vision. Yeah, it's and by the not. way, can we get Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL already? <laughs> That's what you sound it's like. It's not just Junkie, yeah, Junkie XL, because he did do music for the movie, except he didn't probably do any of it. Anyway, uh, just, so you're we're... all sympathetic is what I'm saying. Uh, Gremlinson's great, so we're going to get down to uh, Kyle's number seven. My number seven is, uh, apparently, uh, the originals are not as good, uh, but it's the one oh. I watch more, Home Alone 1. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, we can talk about that, because, you know, J.D. and I have different ones, so... Uh, yeah, you can... I'm glad we have both of them uh, represented, because I, I hope love they them fight both. each other, yeah. I hope they do, too. That'd be Damn. so awesome. I mean, the thing about Home Alone is, is that, like, it could happen to you. Probably has happened to you. <laughs> maybe not this exact <laughs> thing where, like, burglars, like, stuck in, but you've been at Home Alone before, and maybe been creeped out by people like intruding in your house or whatever and there's just the ultimate like kid fantasy you know you're gonna yeah. set up this labyrinth of like let's just be honest death traps <laughs> to, yeah, uh, they are. Yeah, <laughs> to uh stop the intruders or whatever and uh it all takes place during christmas and it's kind of somber at points and uh it's got a really big like nice family message it's, just, it's a good one to watch every year you know like it's just a good it's a good christmas movie uh and it's funny mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's Macaulay Culkin when he wasn't on drugs. You know, I can't remember the time, everybody. <laughs> I um, know. Yeah, it's really weird. It, well, just, it, just barely. It, was just, it, it just happened barely. one time and it was back then. Even though I hear <laughs> Most of my adult life he's been on drugs. I, I hear he's doing better these days, but who knows? Um, yeah, who knows? Or who he's knows? just a really skinny dude. I don't know. I don't know what, he, what he's uh, doing. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, Joe Pesci. Um, dude from, hey, how you doing? Uh, who's the other big, tall, goofy guy? <laughs> Daniel Stern. Daniel Stern, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how you guys know that. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, both both very funny in this movie. Uh, just hilarious, man. And um, yeah, and it's it's one I, I continue to you know I haven't watched it in a couple of years, but I remember what this is. This ranks up there on movies I've seen like most yeah. times in my life. For it's sure. uh, it's the reason why my like my extended family. <clears throat> They're like, oh, we got you a nice hot cheese pizza. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not like five anymore though, so I, I like I like meat on my pizza. But because Kevin McAllister, yeah, eats pizza, that's what I always ordered when I was a kid because I didn't know anything. Interesting. Anybody. See, you Did messed it up that. your whole adulthood, man. Did not, I, I, I do done, not I remember him up. specifically eating cheese. Yeah, pizza. dude, that's a, it's like slogan. Mm, a nice fresh cheese pizza just for me. He says it like, yeah. 
God, I, I, it's been so long since I've watched these movies. I just put, he says it in both movies. Yeah. Dude, I put I can, representation I still, of Home Alone two on my thing. list because of just the fact that I grew up with the movie and just watching the movie all the time, even though I haven't seen it in years. It's so. less likely to happen, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it, it could enlighten when I watch it again, and it's inevitable. I'm going to watch the second one again. Uh, it, it could like be like yeah. derail my entire opinion of the movies. So oh, I don't yeah. think it, I Good don't think it. it will, man. I don't think it will. You know I think, think so? those movies no hold up. You know, I haven't seen it. In a couple I, years, I watch but... them. I watch them annu- annually, and they just don't hold up for me. Yeah. Good. Annually, you watch them annually. I watch them oh. annual. Annual. Ah, left out a letter. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Home Alone, though, I did. I did love. Obviously, I mean, because you know, I was a kid in the fucking like early nineties. Even the music is Christmassy. Like when you're listening mm-hmm. to it. Oh yeah, great, definitely. So John great Candy's score. in the first one too. That's oh my god, he is. Um, yeah. he kill that's, me. Uh, <laughs> that's gonna, if they face each other. That's definitely going to be a uh, Home Alone one notch. In we the, can't in forget that. the. I mean, I can't sing the melody right now because I forget it. But every time I hear the score from Home Alone, I get chills. That one. They play that one when they show outside the house, though. Yeah. yeah, there's more to it. There's like a piano it's all part. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, John Williams did that score, so uh, that it's props for all that shit too. Uh, yeah. For sure. um, so that goes. Well, we're gonna go on to my number six. That's probably not on anybody else's list, and I'm actually pretty excited about it. Bill Burr. Bill Burr. I'm Bill Burr. Uh, I'm excited to talk about this movie, but at the same time, I'm not because my number six is the ref. Oh, uh, cool. That guy Dennis brought up a Leary. couple times on our uh, movie group also. It did. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. to check this one out because I've missed it. Movie this group stars uh, Dennis group. Leary and, unfortunately, Kevin Spacey. So just deal with that. No. Just oh, I'm not, I'm that not, I'm not I'm out. I, I can watch I'm it. out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm just, uh, it's just yeah. a great movie. Like, and, and, I mean, the, it's a Christmas movie because it takes place on Christmas Day. And uh, the robber, Dennis Leary, plays the robber. And this is like... Dennis Leary post uh, cure for cancer stand up special with the asshole song, and um, he he chooses the same director to do the ref, and it was marketed to be Dennis Leary's like big movie. MTV marketed it. It was really weird marketing that they did because it ended up being like an actually like good movie. It wasn't just like Dennis Leary ranting the entire time. It's an actually good movie um, <laughs> that focuses on not just Dennis Leary trying to rob a, a house and and then he goes on the run and encounters Kevin Spacey. Uh, and his his wife, who they're just constantly bickering with, and they they go to a psychiatrist at the beginning of the movie on Christmas Eve, and and they are just dissatisfied because the scient- the, the psychiatrist is always scientist the psychiatrist is always <laughs> like, well, how did that make you feel? And not really taking sides. So Dennis Leary, when he comes in to take them hostage, they're actually like appreciative that he doesn't have a filter. And he's like, uh, you know, ah, oh, that bitch is crazy. She's wrong. Or like, ah, oh, this guy's being a dick or whatever. Like he calls them out on their <laughs> bullshit and they're like happy about it because finally they have somebody that can mediate their issues um, that that has no reason to fucking lie to them. Oh, um, that's where he's the ref. He's the ref, you guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> Makes sense. Sandwich. Uh, but yeah, it's a great, man, it's a great movie. It's got like a, uh, a build up to it where like you have a, this, this giant thing that's, you know, is going to happen where their family and the Kevin Spacey and, uh, the guy who diddles guys, other guys unwilling against their will, Kevin Spacey. Um, I have to, you know, I have to say that that's like required by law now, right? Yeah. I think we have to address it. Man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's no denying that he's a fucking deplorable human being. He was probably doing it on this set. Who knows? Uh, yeah. Fuck that guy. Um, but yeah, he. I feel like Dennis Leary would kick the shit out of him if, if that was going. On. <laughs> oh yeah, if Leary knew yeah, about maybe, that. Shit, oh my god. Yeah, I feel like yeah, I feel of, like uh, Space Spacey didn't have the balls maybe to do it around Leary because Leary would have been like, you know, I'll fucking kick your teeth in if I see you doing. Well, shit Spacey like that. was doing this shit like behind like closed doors and stuff. So, yeah, that's I mean, true. It, it, he kept it hidden from at least the public eye, uh, or at least eyes that would would care. <laughs> Yeah. basically um but uh but yeah anyway the um the the arc that the the couple the married couple has like they are not only dissatisfied with each other and not honest with each other about their issues but like they fucking hate their family and especially the mother is just the worst person in the world um so everything comes to a head at the christmas dinner and they're all this is the movie where they're all wearing like a wreaths on their head with candles that are lit and it's like an iconic like if you look up pictures for the ref you'll see them wearing that um and it might look familiar then but okay. uh, but yeah, the, when they when shit starts hitting the fan, it's hilarious. It's great dialogue, dude. It's it's a good movie. Um, 
I'm glad we have this form so I can just talk about the ref. So we're moving on to JD's number six. Oh, cool. Um, I think this might be a push. I've got the uh, Santa Claus at number oh, six. Oh, that's a push. Down, down, down. Okay, uh, we'll get there. God damn it, <laughs> Kyle. <guys. God> damn <laughs> it. <laughs> Kyle, what's your number six? Uh, uh, it's Nightmare Before Christmas. It's good. It's good. I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad it's got the push. Yeah. It's a good push. No, oh, who can be mad at something like that? <laughs> All right, so my number five. It sounds like we're going to do a series of pushes here. My number five is a Christmas story. Yeah, if we're pushing that. Oh, okay. We are. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. <laughs> now it sounds like I'm in full, pain. full radio voice. Got to, got to get it in every episode. <laughs> Right. Uh, so, JD, your number five. My number five is the Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, oh okay, that's good. So literally, just pushed it. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, good. Well, hey, we can all talk about it because that was my number seven and uh, Kyle's number six. So oh, five, six, right. seven. five, six, seven. Yes. Uh, great movie. Mm-hmm. I watched it for the first time. Like I told you guys, I watched it for the first time like three, two weeks ago. That's yeah. so weird to me. How has yeah. nobody made you I do know. this early? That's so like, crazy to me. You grew I thought... up in the nineties and you never fucking yeah. watched my like that was like on everybody's shirt for the longest. Remember, like when everyone went through that phase when Hot Topic first opened and everything had Jack Skellington. Oh on yeah, everything had Jack Skellington. This is so crazy to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, it looks too weird as a kid. Like I was just dumb about it. It looks weird. Or whatever. It's um, not John by hand, and you were really like sticking yeah. about that. <laughs> it's like uh, the go- a gothic things just didn't appeal to me when I was that age at all. Yeah. Um, and then when I grew up to appreciate more things, I just this thing fell by the good music because it just fucking great, great, music. great music. Yeah. Danny great Elfman, music. man. Danny fucking Elfman Danny singing Elfman. and writing the music in this. Ugh, What's that this? dude. And even despite his interviews that he's been giving, he's been in the news a lot because of Justice League and stuff, and how he's like. You know, I hate when when composers completely do away with super superhero themes or whatever. They do away with themes from previous movies, and it's like, dude, that's. But they're rebooting a movie. Like it wouldn't yeah, make sense to be like its own theme. Yeah, why did you use why did you use your own new theme for Batman 1989 instead of the Batman TV show theme? That's yeah. You know what I mean? Like, kind of yeah, like negates your own exactly. argument. Exactly. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Is dude. he just yeah. mad that people na, 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 are no na, na, longer na, na, using na. his theme? Is that what he means by that? Yes, really? I think yeah. so. I think it's a bitterness towards his leg- legacy or how it was treated or whatever. Right. Right. Uh, it's however he perceives it. But uh, I'm bringing it back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it doesn't fit at all. Like I was appreciative at first of like, oh, it's gonna be little. Yeah, things. you're a big champion of that. And yeah, that's all, that's all you and like, then, you know. Getting, and then when you see it people. in action, like Bat- Batman, uh, he's flying a thing, and then it gets destroyed, and the Batmobile flies out of it. Uh, and then the theme, and I'm like, this doesn't fit at all. Like oh, <laughs> I man. thought it would fit, and it, it's fucking terrible. <laughs> I am so it's never gonna see bummer. that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be I like, just, I'm so confused. I'm just going to out of context shit on it just because, you know, who cares? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> when you do probably see it, I'm, I'm going to say probably. Like 60% sure you're going to see it. I'll, I'll be awake. At one night. I'll, it'll be one of those nights I wake up at four in the morning and go, oh, yeah. I can't get back to sleep. Ugh, I guess I'll watch that shitty fucking movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> like Fate of the Furious type thing where it's like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I guess, I guess I'll put this with. on. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, Night Before Christmas, I totally derailed, but yeah, Elfman, 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 Elfman is the perfect choice for this movie, and I know Tim Burton didn't direct it, even though it says his name on it, he produced it. No, isn't that it weird? Something. It's very weird to do that. Uh, everybody calls it a Tim Burton movie, and it's like, I still I mean, do kinda, this yeah. <laughs> hey, next. Um, but some, nobody directed it. I, I don't mean to say nobody. Some dude directed it. I don't know his name. Jim mm. Discurpin. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, Elfman, though, is the star for me. Like, he wrote and sang all that shit, and it's oh, the music's incredible. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's super good. Just a, but y'all watched it when y'all were kids, huh? That's how you, uh, yeah, it's how we grew up. such affection. Yeah, for we grew up like uh, normal I I was, fucking 90s kids, you know? Yeah, I think I was a teenager by the time I first saw it. I, I don't remember seeing it in the theaters or with my family or anything. Oh, but, really? Okay, yeah, it's it's really, I don't think it's one that my family's ever 
seen. So this one's kind of abnormal for me in that regard. I remember almost my dad uh, took me to this to theater, and uh, this is a movie, and he would happily like take me to see movies again uh, if he liked them. And I was like, oh, yeah. I want to see that movie again, and he goes, no. <laughs> he hated it. He's like, when I'm not... I'm not fucking going to watch that again. He didn't say that, but <laughs> we're not watching that again. You know, you can get your mom to get it for you on DVD or whatever when it comes out. No, he out. totally it, said that. He was like, I'm not fucking going to that, you fucking yeah, we're not fucking going to that stupid thing, you fucking <laughs> dumb kid. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, oh boy. Okay. Oh boy. That's how we talked as kids. <laughs> Talk like a Z's, but like in a higher pitch. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> it's the nightmare before Christmas. Whatever. I uh, what's this? Uh, I with my dog. I always do what Aziz did in the Parks and Recreation, where um, there's a dog I think that's like three legs or some shit. No, it's not. It's not Champion. There's a dog that he's trying to get April to adopt her or something like that. And he's like, oh, April, look at me. I'm just a little puppy. And I, I do that to my dog all the time. I'm just a little puppy. And it's so stupid. I don't know why that's my takeaway. Some random scene from Parks and Rec, but it is. God damn it. Such a random aside. Anyway, does anybody else have anything else to say about Nightbird before um, Christmas? I think it's no, a man. creative story, it. certainly, uh, of, of like splitting up uh, holidays between towns and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, you can certainly relate to the main characters. I mean, especially now in like in our adult life of like he's just tired of the mundane task of doing the same fucking thing every day or every year at least. Um, I get it. Like I get it, dude. Trust me. I get. Yeah, it. I, I connect there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, good shit. Good movie. Very very inventive. So that was uh, who had that highest? Uh, that was JD I had that the number highest, five. Yeah. yeah. All right. So to, we're at we're at, uh, we're at Kyle's number five then. This is probably getting pushed. It's uh, Elf. Oh, yeah. That's, uh... <clears throat> I'm just yeah, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Five is it's still okay. Five, five, is is, five is unacceptable. It's like... I mean, you know what? I, I, to be honest, used to not like this movie. Really? Wow. Yeah. Take a little I, while I just, I was like, No, I just fucking stick at my ass about it. Um, then you watch it, like, and I'm just like, oh, this is a really fun movie, and I'm just a shitty person. <laughs> 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 oh boy uh so we're down to my number four and let me give a little hint of what it is uh-huh. all right there we go santa claus, <laughs> oh, santa claus. yeah i, I got to find it. the, the melody of the music i was like it's just a lot of percussion in that fucking song all right anyway it's the santa claus this is my number four and I'm going to be honest, yes, I put this above Christmas Story, and it doesn't make any fucking sense that I did that. I apologize for everybody. But I just watched this one more. I just did. And and I'm sure that if I watch it again for next week's episode, that's the whole point of homework, right? When you watch it again and you're like, oh, my bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, maybe <laughs> yeah. it's one of those things where it's yeah. like, oops, shit, I didn't like that movie at all. Um, but honestly, dude, like, I mean, I saw, when I saw this movie several, this was one I played all the time, regardless of the season. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just not only Tim Allen, did he kind of remind me if like, if my dad were a dork or something, um, but he's not. So it's like, uh, whatever. Anyway. Uh, but the kid though was very relatable in it. Yeah. He wasn't like a shitty kid actor to my recollection. If I watch it again, I'll be like, oh, my God, this kid's terrible. But He was pretty uh, good. Yeah, I remember him being great. And this is where I first got introduced to David Crummeltz as uh, Bernard, as the elf. Oh, yeah, and that's right. He was a fucking natural. Like, I knew. Like, I was like, this dude's got fucking talent, dude. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah, bro. I saw him in a – did you ever see <laughs> Life with Mikey with uh, um, fucking Michael J. Fox where he's a talent agent? Did you ever see that? No, no. That's um, the, the actor. I can never remember his name, so I'm just going to call him Bernard. Um, okay. Yeah, he was it's David he was Krumholtz. One of the, David Krumholtz. Yeah, um, David Krumholtz. He was, I think. He's one of the child actors that was like the big shot in this agency that Michael J. Fox and Nathan Lane run together. So that was my first exposure to him. Anyway, I'm trying to remember one of his quotes from Superbad because he's one of the guys in the room that quarters Michael. Sarah oh, the singer. you're a fucking singer. You're, you're a, a singer. Fucking you fucking singer. Are you fucking lying to me? Fucking lying to me. Oh, you're not a singer. Are you yeah. fucking lying to me. Yeah. <laughs> It's cool that he hangs out with those dudes that, uh, like, he's been in This Is The End, too, and stuff like that. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he hangs out with those guys. Uh, it must be a Jew thing. I don't know. Oh, hey. Ooh, hey. <laughs> All right. Oh. I'm going to hell. Uh, maybe not, because it doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> hey. Oh. 
pushing buttons today, man. That's what I'm doing. There you go. It's what we do. <clears throat> Kyle's uncomfortable. I'm not <clears throat> comfortable with this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's reminding me of my holidays. All the button pushing. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, Santa Claus is is it's just highly enjoyable, and it's uh, it's quite a predicament he gets himself in, and and seeing him get fatter throughout the movie. It's just I, I was just easy to please as a kid when I was watching this movie over and over again. So yeah, totally, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest about it. And if I watch it when I watch it again soon, and uh, JD, where did you have this again? Number six. Uh, yes, that's in my number six. When did and you it watch will be it? Rewatched. When? Last? Like most yeah. recently? Um, maybe maybe two or three years ago, somewhere in there. Oh, okay. Maybe so. Not well. Super now that fresh. I'm on a first name basis with Judge Reinhold because he sat behind me during a. Oh yeah, of absolutely. Death. He laughed at the thing and. <laughs> Yeah. Now we're on first name basis. I now, have Twitter. Now, do you Snapchat each other regularly? We do. My, yeah, I that's good stuff. To him, he sends me uh, D pics. I don't think he's ought to do that. It's if it, it's consent based with. Oh, pics. It like, is. I think it'd be okay. So yeah. you, think, you know, you get away with that. Uh, he's he's good in Santa Claus though. He's pretty good. He's, he's, he's yeah. like he's good at being the corny dad. He's like, he's Mister Rogers, like yeah, absolutely. He's so good at that though. Yeah, he does he that is. in Beverly Hills Cop, and it's just yeah, he's just so he's built for that role. He's got the personality for it. Yep. Um Anyway, that's my number four, and so we're okay. on to JD's number four. Uh, yeah. Put a uh, Home Alone two at number four. Is it okay? So that was a uh, previous push, wasn't it? Yes, that was my number nine. Yeah. But, um, I think I have the theme in my head. Is it... Yeah, that fucking yeah. theme. Moved there my ass go. to okay. tears when I hear that yes. shit. Yes. Yes. God damn. There's, there's so many themes, though. Like, I, I can... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's because John one, Williams. There's yeah. not just one fucking theme in, the, in those movies. That's right. No. Like, there's, there's a lot of themes that are reoccurring, you know? Right. Yeah, totally. It's fucking uh, John I can't, Williams, I can't dude. Wait that's to watch both that's of these, what he man. does. I'm so excited. Uh, I am going to fucking get a kick out of revisiting Home Alone and Home Alone 2. I'm very yeah. excited for that. They're yeah. so much fun. So yeah, much they're fun. very fun movies. Both of them are, yeah. And I don't care if it's the same story, just bigger. Yeah. Like, because you got the it creepy, it's exactly what it is, but there's you got the wrong with creepy that. person that he kind of comes, you know, to understand and realize that, you know, they're maybe deeper than what they seem like on the surface. Like, that lady's not just a weird lady covered in bird shit. She's right. more than that. Yeah, she's a weird lady covered in bird shit with a heart. With a heart <laughs> of, of gold covered in bird shit. Hearts can have bird shit on them too. It's okay. Bird shit. Yeah, it's fine. Gold. You know, we don't all have shelters to get us away from the bird shit. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> uh, I had this at nine. I had it so low, even below. It's a Wonderful Life, which I just saw, and I'm still like kind of thinking about and stuff, like my mm-hmm. appreciation of it. But I did have it lower because it's just this premise is fucking ridiculous. Like even it the is. first one. It's. It I mean, I get it. They had a lot of kids. It was larger than the Brady Bunch and the Partridge Family, or whatever. Um, but at a certain point, it would point, never she have... happen again. And she'd be she'd be visited by CPS for sure. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Like she would. The, the first movie should have ended in an arrest, at least, of one of her parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it's uh, <laughs> ma'am, your son uh, pretty much killed two guys. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Have you seen the Family Guy version of uh, Home Alone, where it's like the adults are totally competent? No. Oh, is that, is they that open the older? door. It's so fucking funny. They open the door, and they're not trying to do an impression of Pesci and Stern. They're just regular burglars. They open okay. the door, and they're like, hey, look out. There's a fire truck there. Oh, thanks. I almost tripped over it. <laughs> and then, like, oh the thing God. swings. Uh, the thing swings from, like, the, the two by four or whatever swings from the door frame, and they're like, whoa, that almost hit us. Well, that's crazy. <laughs> so, not, not, the, up, not the family that. adults. But yeah, the, yeah. The you, Kyle's seen that. Yeah. yeah the, and then the kid shows up and they're like, look, a kid. And then they shoot him. They're like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I should probably get out of here. <laughs> I have to watch that. Oh, my yeah, God. That's pretty funny. Yeah. That's, that's, that's an older one. That's old yeah, bit. it is an older one. Yeah. But I love that bit because it's like true. Like the, 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 the thing that we enjoy the most is the fact that the robbers, the, what do they call themselves? Sticky bandits. The sticky bandits. Wet bandits. The wet bandits. bandits thank you. In this, in this movie, it's wet bandits. That's or right. sticky. Sorry. It sticky wet in the first sticky too. in this one. Yeah. Sticky in this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, uh, <laughs> very important detail guys. Very. Um, and I think it's the third one that's like uncomfortably named the Jizz Bandits. It's really weird. <laughs> yeah, it's really Well, that's weird. the natural it's... progression of wet and sticky. <laughs> and if, right, if, you, if you really think motion, about it. Whenever they do it, yeah, it's gross. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, it's, I mean, the, the, most of the enjoyment comes from the fact that they're stupid. They're like buffoons trying to commit right. crimes. Right. Um, it's not, it's, they're not come, it, and it's just that, you know, it's just downgrading adults, like bringing it down to the kids' level. They're, and like, they're just, just because smart they're enough. adults, they're not smart. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and that kind of like 
Uh, this movie, like the second one specifically, I don't know why I watched this one the most. Maybe because it was in New York City, and I always romanticized that in my head when I was a kid. Like yeah. I wanted to go there so bad, Dude, especially yeah. after Teenage Mutant Ninja Thanks, Turtles Hollywood. and this. Yeah, I know. Um, and Gremlins for me. That was all in New York. I, I, I wish know. I'd seen that as a kid. Dude. Oh, yeah, oh, that man. movie would be like fucking number one for me in this list if I did, because that movie's so good. Um, but, uh, but seriously, like Home Alone two though, like it's just um, it kind of like destigmatized like adults for me. Like I always thought of them as like it's a movie. Yes, it's fiction, but like you always like kind of put them up on a pedestal, and then you watch this movie, and you're like, oh, some of them are dumber. Like some of them are dumber, dumber than us. So it's yeah. fine, you know. Right. Like <laughs> I'll be fine in the real world. I'll be fine. Right. Right. Um. And then the ending, this one specifically gets to me because I don't remember the ending of Home Alone 1. I think the parents just arrive at home, right? Um, I don't remember it being dramatic like 2. Well, uh, he, she, gets, he eventually... she, she leaves early in a van and gets there. Yeah. Like, she gets there and finds Kevin or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, it's not. It's, she, it's just she gets her. there right as the police are showing up because oh, okay. Ke- Kevin's, like, flooded the house with oh, them see. in it, right? And yeah. he's gone over to it. He's gone over to a couple neighbors' houses. I, I think. Wait like, to, I can't wait to watch this. Again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, real. the second uh, one I vividly remember because she is thinking of what Kevin like. Where would he be? Where what would he, he go? Remember? Yeah, yeah. And so she finds him at the uh, the tree. I think the Rockefeller tree. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's just I don't know. It just touched a nerve for me because when I was a kid, I was always like, my mom would do that for me, and I, of course she would. Uh, you Big know. Pussy. Uh, fucking, I was a mama's boy big time. Dude. <laughs> big time mama's boy. I probably still am. I don't know. I definitely am. Uh, but uh, yeah, it really touched a nerve for me. So that's why it made my list at all. Um, yeah. Not to talk shit about Home Alone 2. I know uh, how you were romanticizing stupid, how good you know, of a like, mom she was, but really she lost him twice two Christmases in a row. Well, hold on. <laughs> I've, been, I've mentioned this. The second one ain't on them because this movie is built around the talk boy, right? The, yeah. He gets lost at the airport because he has to put the fucking batteries in his talk boy, yeah. and then he follows the he follows somebody that's not his dad. Like, yeah, that's true. but it's she should have been him. like, "Hey, this plane's about to take sure, off." Where's sure, 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 sure. But on the scale of like mo- movie mom sins, like that's not as bad as just leaving him at home altogether and not yeah. realizing during that whole process, like they were running, they were cutting it close at the gate. They weren't all sitting together. You know, she just did the assumptive thing and assumed he was on the other side of the plane. I but think you would she think gave up counting after eight or something. Eh, whatever, we're all here. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I do. Re- I do remember the scene when they all lined up after they get yeah. to Florida, and she's like counting, and Kevin's not there. I remember her uh, fainting. You remember that look? Yeah, of her, yeah, 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 her eyes like, roll oh, back shit, and she just again, falls yeah. straight back. Yeah. That had I am glad that they kid. ended it here because I do feel like there is a little bit more of an emotional punch at the end of Lost in New York. Whereas, like, if they came back for another one, it would kind of be like, they're not doing this again, really. So yeah, yeah. they approached no, it with yeah, a different it. family, and it was terrible. But it still, I'm glad so they didn't bad. come back. I'm, it was I'm so, so bad. Glad didn't. Yeah, it was. And Chris Columbus did this, uh, did, I think, the first one and the second one. And he's kind of known for, like, doing these uh, tender, more tender family affair movies of, like, Harry Potter, the first one and the second one. Yeah. Um, what else did he do? Uh, I'm trying to look. Christmas with the Cranks. There we go. Another holiday oh, one. Oh man, Another I favorite. saw that one. <laughs> oh, actually, he wrote that one. He didn't. Did he Yikes. direct it too? He didn't direct oh, it. Oh no. Um, the Goonies. Done, like, he was he did Goonies. Goonies. He, he did Goonies. He did Goonies. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he wrote yeah. on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, he's done. I'm looking through his director credits. It's kind of split up, so it looks a little weird. Uh, Stepmom. I remember crying through that for some reason. He did Rent. Uh, thanks, fuck. Oh, he did Mrs. Doubtfire. Shit. Wow. Oh yeah. I like Great that movie, movie yeah. dude. Yeah. God, I love Robin Williams, man. Especially yeah. now, dude. It's, oh man, I I've, I've, I've been to I've been to that house and like not in it, but just seen it in San Francisco and yeah. oh, I choked up. Got choked up. Real good, got real choked bad. up. I wasn't crying, mom. Really Fuck bad. Off. I got choked up. Really bad. <laughs> mom, just uh, leave, me, leave me alone, mom. <laughs> so that was Jamie's number four. We're gonna go to Kyle's number four now. My number four is Scrooge. Wait, Ooh, uh, actually, because uh, my number three is Scrooge, and I think my number okay. three is Scrooge as well. So, oh, let's, so we can uh, just talk about it. Yeah, yeah let's just talk about Scrooge. Cool. Um, um, I this is another one movie. I watched for the first time, like uh, recently, and that's how oh, good I, I thought it. it was. Yeah, yeah. you like liked yeah. it more than me, apparently. No, that's not, <laughs> that's not what that means. <laughs> Recently uh, bias. <laughs> Uh, all, yeah, it's a really good movie, man, and apparently it holds up really well. Uh, yeah. You know, I've I've Pretty always fun. had it in my life. It feels like so. Um, you yeah. know, it's, it's just a movie that's just always been around, and uh, it's another one of those movies I watched with my pops and stuff like that. We love Bill Murray. 
Um, and he's great in this. Dude, he plays such a good asshole. You know, like, Dude, he's so good at being asshole. He's asshole. fucking great yeah. in this movie. Uh, it's just super funny, you know, and it's, uh, you know, I, I, this is one that I, I've, I've skipped a couple Christmases now. So yeah. I'm very excited to watch this movie. Uh, I, think cool. on, I think I caught it on, I streamed it on, uh, it was on Netflix. It might be coming back, but it was on Amazon, I think I watched it. I can't remember. I Voice. definitely streamed this one, though. And it's, uh, god damn it, this is so good. Anchored easily by Bill Murray, it seems. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. his movie through and through. You, I, I don't want to say you empathize with him, but there's something about his just general character and the way he carries himself that you don't hate him completely. Uh-oh. You still laugh when he's a total dick. And and his turnaround at the end doesn't feel disingenuous. It feels honest to his character where he's still... He's doing it in his way where it's not... He's making people sing and shit like that. It's not all that... Um, it's not, like, corny, you know? Yeah. It's, it's still, like, Bill Murray in a renegade type of comedian way. He sure. turns a corner or whatever. Um, like, yeah. It's this an organic just, transformation. Exactly. It feels good. Like, especially after the first ghost. Uh, this is, by the way, guys, this is just Christmas Carol. That's all this is. But it's Yeah, that's 80s. all this movie is. Yes. <laughs> but it's great, though, because sometimes you can take a bad turn with Christmas Carol. Sometimes you can do something inventive like this movie did. Um but yeah, after the first ghost visits and he goes to, he's like, oh, I've, I've done things wrong. I'm going to go rectify things with her. And then when she has all the volunteers asking her questions, she's like, why don't you just fucking leave this place, man? All these people are just bothering you. This is annoying. Just live life for yourself. And it's right. like, oh, shit, he didn't change at all. <laughs> Thank God. I thought the movie was going to end. Uh, <laughs> uh, he doesn't feel like a dick, though, when he's doing dickish things. Like, there's, there's a part where early on where he fires somebody. And um, who was it? Viola Davis, I think, is his assistant or something. Viola Davis is his assistant, and that weird name guy. Like, yeah, I'm not man. I'm like, oh, I'm Bob Bob Cat- yeah, the guy who fired. Bob. Oh, Bob yeah, Cat- yeah Cat- that's the guy. Yeah, yeah. and he's like, oh, like man, uh, and she goes, it's Christmas, and he's like, oh, thank you for reminding me. Cancel his bonus. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, shit, yeah. that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fucked up. But that's just the way he delivers it too. Is like, oh my god, thank you. Cancel his bonus. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like when you expect him to show like that little bit of a heart, you're like, yes, hey, yeah, that's what. No, like. Not here. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Murray's always great at the misdirect of his, of his emotions yeah. and, and how his delivery and stuff. It's so God. I'm sure uh making one of the movie best comedic the actors time is uh as Ghostbusters two would have been an equal, uh, a good challenge for him. Like uh playing the straight up because they came out around the same time, so I'm assuming they were made around the same time. So it seems playing like it. uh playing Venkman where he's a little more reserved and like yeah. subtle with his sarcasm versus mm-hmm. uh his name is Frank Cross. I don't remember that being his Richard name at Donner all in that did movie. This movie. Holy fuck. I didn't know that, dude. I didn't know the director oh, yeah. of Superman did this movie. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's really awesome. Late, and the director of Lethal goodness. Weapon. Yeah. This guy was all over the map, man. Lethal Weapon, Lethal Weapon 2, 3, um, Maverick. Conspiracy Theory, which I apologize for all the time. I love that movie. He did Maverick? Yeah. Oh. Why? That was... <laughs> I, I like that movie a lot as a kid, yeah. and I I don't I, I didn't like it when I watched it. I enjoy it back. because you know I like uh, I mean at a certain point I, I like Jody I'm Foster not going to spend money that. on a Mel Gibson a new Mel Gibson movie. I'm not going to see Daddy's Home Two or whatever. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. still watch his performances and be like, man, this dude's magnetic as fuck. And then Jodie Foster's <laughs> in that movie too, and she's she's great. She's one of the best actresses that like yeah, she's a, a lot of people underrate in my opinion. Like yeah. You know, like when you think of her body of work, you're like, yeah, shit. Why is nobody else talking about her? She did isn't, her uh, own thing all the time. Isn't Alfred Molina like the super big bad guy in, at one of the poker games? I'm pretty sure he is. He pops up every. I, remember I, I only face. remember him from like Spider Man Two, and then I see him in older movies, and I'm like, Holy yeah, he was shit, like a, he was like a character actor there for a little while. <laughs> Oh man! Um, all right, uh, so uh, Scrooge, yeah, Scrooge though, that's gonna be, yeah. Whew. That's going to be an all, and high in the brackets, I think, for sure. That's going to be a contender because that's very festive, especially <laughs> the ending. Um, I love Bill Murray so much, man. Love him to death. For sure. For sure. He's an icon. It's going to be like, I mean, it might as well be a national holiday whenever, I mean, because he's going to pass away when we're all alive. Oh, yeah. man. Don't even. I don't even. I, I mean, can't. he's like 70, something like I know. that. He's older right now. And no, he he's going to he's gonna crash our funerals. <laughs> No, he crashed. Sixty-seven. His Sixty-seven. Uh, pretty yeah, I thought I'm over here going. He's got to be eighty. He's eighty. He's got this old guy hair for like his entire career. Uh, <laughs> he's got that Steve Martin syndrome where it's like he's old as shit, right? Yeah, uh, Steve Martin's had that hair since he was like thirty. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. he's just had white hair. 
Yeah, like three oh, amigos. About he's him still too. like rocking that. Yeah, he's still fucking white haired. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like still full of head, full head. Movie. It's not. I fucking it's love not... three amigos. Oh my god! Oh my god! Dude, I do too. That's like, one of my. What do you of... think a plethora is? Plethora. <laughs> 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 I love I love that you I think was it last year that Three Amigos was 1986 was that mm-hmm. Yeah so like I watched it for when we did the 1986 oh, cool, episode cool. and uh, that was the first time watching it and I was like this holds up like it was really yeah, funny it, like it made I think it made my list even Yeah um, uh, even though it was Chevy, good uh, Chevy Chase love... is great Martin Short's great Yeah like when when Martin when uh, what's his face Steve Martin is uh, chained up to the wall and he's trying to right. make his way. Oh my god, that shit fucking cracks me up to this day. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He'll lose footing and like slide all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> Just slapstick at its finest. Yeah, and it's like Absolutely. Tropic Thunder before Tropic Thunder. I love that premise. I just yeah, love it. It totally is that. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Wow, they think I, they're I making a movie even... when they're in the reality of it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Brilliant. Exactly. And they're Never like, put oh, that together. clearly we're making a movie and they're not at all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, anyway, uh, so, uh, that was, uh, do we have anything else to say on Scrooge or, um, no, nah, man, moving on, moving on uh, to nah, Kyle's number three. Then. Oh, wow. Uh, mine is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Ooh, <laughs> major oversight on my I part. Feel, Jesus. I feel really bad about this. Cause I've seen that movie like once a few years ago. And you got, I, I really have to see it again, dude. This That's is no, literally I, all I, comes I down see to it. Like a list oversight. Like, oh, is... oh, so you really would have put it in your list. I should have. Yeah, oh, okay. come on, man. Jingle yeah, dude, this is the jingle all the way. Jingle all the way. <laughs> that made the list in this, didn't you? You offend me, sir. Look, no, look, no. look, 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 look. I put the movies that meant shit to me when I was a kid, <laughs> and I didn't get into Christmas Vacation until I was an adult, and I'm really? sorry. Man, no, this is, I, this is I, another one I grew up with. This is another dad yeah, I didn't grow up with it. Uh, I actually, I'm gonna tell you guys something y'all might not know about me. The National Lampoon Vacation series is like yeah. legit one of my favorite comedy series of all time, which is wow. why when Vacation, the newer one, sucks so bad, it oh, was like yeah. really you devastating. Just, like, crushed. I was just like, yeah. Mm. Did you ever? Watch and I knew it? it would too. Yeah, I watched it after, like, not in theaters, but like you mean like, the, HBO the or something. The in the last couple of years, yeah, dude, yeah. it's not good. Oh, oh my gosh, man, man just. Man, I even like Vegas Vacation, which that movie's like arguably not good. Dude, that was the one I, <laughs> I watched the most. I have that on DVD. <laughs> because like Christmas Vacation was like an 80s movie. Like I just didn't, as a kid, I didn't watch a lot of 80s movies like at yeah. all. Yeah. Um, but Vegas Vacation was the 90s one. That came out like in 1996. We talked it did, about yeah. It was a lot newer and had, had, the, had the older kids. Uh, yeah. Uh, I watched so that one movie, a ton, dude. This movie was about like having your family over for Christmas, you know, and just the chaos that comes with that, and like the stress that it puts on you. And, uh, and, the, and my, the, I, I know I've said this on there before, but Clark or Sparky in uh, 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 in the series or whatever, that's my dad's name, Sparky, you know, and like they oh my are literally exactly alike in every <laughs> single way. That's so and, like, awesome slash terrible. Hitting on the jewelry lady, you know, oh like, my like God. nicely, like not like 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 a like an asshole or whatever, you know, yeah. just like. He's very flirtatious or whatever, just like Clark was. Like, just everywhere he goes, he's always making eyes at like, a girl. But, like, again, not in, like, a gross way or whatever. Just, like, that's just his personality. Right. Uh, and just, like, has the, has had multiple freakouts like that, like he has in, uh, in, in Christmas Vacation uh, at, at, you know, Christmas or whatever, where he just starts screaming obscenities and a, a classic, like, line in that movie where he, after the entire, like, screaming, he's like, ah, oh, where's the aspirin? And just walks off, like, said or whatever. And my parents and I, or my, my sister and my mom would always say that, like, after my dad would, like, like blow his gas, he'd be like, oh, where's the aspirin? You know, quoting that movie or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a way to break the ice. And, man, I just fucking love this movie. Uh, it's just so fucking great and uh, very, very, very funny. Um, very, like, I don't know, if, I don't want to say R-rated, but it's, like... It's not like for kids, you know. Like, no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely not. I never, forget, never none watched it. Yeah. yeah, that, I mean, that like, was there's... one my parents got onto. Were like, eh, no. yeah, yeah, <laughs> mm, not this. <laughs> How yeah, about no. no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, my dad would scream squirrel, which like a, a squirrel infiltrates the house. Oh it's yeah. in the tree. And, and like he would say that. I mean, it may be the only word he said for years. You know, like it's just like it, just randomly, like he had Tourette syndrome or whatever, would just scream squirrel. <laughs> Uh, just from that movie, and uh, <laughs> to this day, I still do. I mean, it's just like you know, those those like sensibilities rub off on you whenever your parents see that shit around yeah. you all the time. Uh, fucking love this movie, man! It's so fucking great. I really hope uh, you know y'all when y'all watch it. Oh yeah, you know, we'll have more to say about it for sure. Yeah, because I definitely already have it. Uh, oh man, and just one more. Thing. 
uh, it's classic, iconic, I would even say, when he's, like, plugging in, like, all of his lights for the first time. Oh, yeah, and, that's like, the it cover. Just, it, yeah, it doesn't even work or whatever. It doesn't work, and, you know, he keeps on doing it, and he has his oh, fucking yes, freak yeah. out. And then, like, everyone's trying to figure out what's not working, and then, like, uh, his wife just flips a switch just as he's, like, plugging in. It's super epic and over the top, and, yeah, ah, it's just fucking ridiculous. Uh, it's super great. What, it's got a crazy cast in it too. Like you'd reckon, like all the extended family, like mm-hmm. they're all people who went on to do like big TV stuff or whatever. Oh like, sure, sure. Everyone loves Raymond. I know, like that grandma's in there. Or Debra. Whatever. Debra. Debra. Uh, Debra. I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> he's in the big sick. Oh, and he's really great in it. Uh, Raymond. 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 I'm your brother. Here Raymond. we go again. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so uh, that leads into my number two, I think. Yeah. All right. My number two is about some P's, some T's, and some A's. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Mm, we're going to push that. Oh, we're going to push that? Oh. Okay. I wonder where we'll push it to. Is it your negative one? Uh, all right. uh, no, it's so- <laughs> zero because it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's, what it's a actually- switch. What a twist. My number- it's my number two as well. All right, I just saw that. It's oh, it's your number two, two as well. Yeah, so, so we, uh, we push, push it, that too. Yeah, pu- we're pushing it from JD two, uh, and so we're down to Kyle's number two, which I think I know what it is because we pushed one from earlier for me. Yeah. Christmas story. Christmas story. Nice. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, this I'm, is. I'm so okay. happy. It's like really yeah. high for you because it makes sense. Like it makes sense for it to be high for somebody. This movie makes me so happy that like I'll watch it every year. But it's not mm-hmm. a movie that I watch like you know just once. Like it's on with that channel where it's just playing twenty four seven. Yeah. It, when I TV when I, I don't have TV anymore. When it was on, that channel was on all day. Like during Christmas Eve, like I, I would watch Same that here. multiple times every every uh, year during that season. I just. Uh, I love this movie. It's like the Goonies of non-adventure movies. Uh, mm-hmm. well, that doesn't make any sense. It's like a non-adventure Goonies movie, you know? <laughs> there where you it's go. Just like, it's kids <laughs> hanging out, growing up in a small town, you know, like, just doing stuff, you know, like, just getting into hijinks and stuff like that. You know, it's growing up. It's slice of life, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I just fucking love it. Um, Double Dog Daring. I mean, we fucking, we did oh all that shit God, when we yes, were kids. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's stuff that we were doing when we were kids. Um yeah, sticking your tongue to a pole, all that shit. I mean, we, I didn't do that. So I'm not a fucking idiot. But, uh, yeah, I just, I really like this movie. Ho, 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 the fucking crazy, like, uh, Santa who's, like, that's not listening to what any of the kids want and just being really creepy, you know? And, yeah. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, shoving him down those, like, those long slides and all these kids are screaming and terrified. And, uh, oh, it's just hilarious. Uh, it's like the epitome of what Christmas is. Mm-hmm. Um, slipping the F word in front of your dad while you're you know changing your lugs out on a on a blown out tire, um, all that stuff. You know, it just it reminds me of just growing up and stuff like that. Even though we didn't do the soap thing at my house, it's not it's a little dated. I think I don't think anyone does that. Yeah, super good yeah. This movie. was my this was my number five, and like you were saying, dude. I mean, yeah, I I have it. I have it. Uh, I mean, you know, I spend pretty much every year with my family. Um, for, for the holidays and yeah we have it on tv <laughs> at least one tv we have on yeah. tbs and we don't change it all day we just watch christmas story on a loop at different parts i honestly don't even know that i've seen the full movie together <laughs> like I, as a coherent <laughs> thing I, I like it's just i've seen so much of it in different parts yeah. and i'm like i've yeah. seen this movie you know what i mean um and uh, yeah, it's just a really great movie, and the way that they tell the story too, with the narrator and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, to me, as a kid, when I would watch that, it was just like, oh, you can do that during movies. It was just kind of like this thing that I was so unfamiliar with. Um, and not really directed by anybody notable, in my opinion. Like it's no. a Bob Clark movie. I don't know who who that he did Porky's. I I really can't. Oh, I mean, Porky's is a big movie. Give him much else. Uh, it, yeah, it kind of is. But uh, Baby Geniuses. Oh man, this guy's a heavy oh, hitter. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, but uh, yeah, he did that. He did this movie, and uh, it's iconic as fuck. And it's like, I mean, it's called a Christmas is in the word, so it's festive as yeah. shit. So, well, um, and this is another movie that reminds me, like the dad reminds me of my dad, where it's yeah. just like you get a sexy like leg like lamp, and he wants to put it up in the living room, but mom's not fucking having it, you know? Like that, that's right. something that's a hundred percent something he would pull, and also sneaking a BB gun as a toy, you know, yeah. like. Uh, on, like despite the mom's disapproval, or it's just like that. Just it just reminds me. Of, and I appreciate that shit, you know. Like yeah. that's you know, 
you know, the, getting the double. Getting you mentioned pe- the uh, the double dog, whatever dare, and uh, yeah, that totally took over my life as soon as I heard about that. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's 100% dog dare, this yeah. bled so far into real life, uh, all of the stories that stem from this movie. And um, it's just, yeah, it's just a good coming-of-age movie, man. Um, ultimately, I mean, even outside of it being a a genre like a holiday movie, it's it's just a good coming-of-age movie. And that actor, uh, never heard from again. So Never. <laughs> guy who played, <laughs> so Ralphie, is that his name? I can't even remember. I think it's Ralphie. Um, yeah, I do. I do have this queued up too, so I'm definitely gonna watch this again as a co- uh, like a whole thing. Uh, I've actually like. never seen it all the way through. It's like a it's like a hard drive that needs to be refragmented for me. Like, yeah, I know I've seen the whole movie, right? I just I can't remember when I sat down and watched it all the way through. So I don't think I have. My sister, this is like one of her favorite <laughs> movies ever, um, outside of like Gremlins and Howard the Duck for some reason. What? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if she still likes that, but she did as a kid. Uh, but, uh, yeah, um, uh, Christmas story though, like she married somebody who hates it. So I don't even know how they stay. Oh married. man. <laughs> okay. Movies know aren't a deal breaker, but like, it. it's just like anytime he has, we have it on, he's like, can we change it? I'm like, oh my God. Does he hate it? Or is he just like tired of it? He hates it. He just doesn't like Jesus. it. At all. Yeah. Wow. I love this movie also scared me, uh, in regards to Santa. Like I was like, oh, is Santa going to kick me down a, uh, uh, down a fucking slide or whatever. Like, I'd always be like, ah, because Santa was like to him intimidating, um, in, yeah. in a way. And that kind of like made him intimidating to me. Like, I don't ever want to sit on that, that guy's lap again. So, uh, yeah, great job, Christmas story. Anyway, moving on <laughs> to my number one. And it sounds like JD's number one because we haven't talked about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, my number one, I just changed it today. It's Elf. Oh, nice. what? Yes. That's yeah. a high. That's a high old elf. Man, what uh, <laughs> what inspired the change? Did you just watch it or uh, the festivity of it? U- ultimately, like really, yeah. only that's the thing that made me think of it more. Is like, sure, we're going to talk about one that's like technically a better movie. Yeah, and it will probably end <laughs> yeah, up being I mean, like the yeah. number one seed overall. But like, Elf is the one that I sit down and watch with my family. I used like we had a thing where we would. This is a 2003 movie, and uh, yeah, I was a teenager when it came out. But like. Every every like uh, holiday for the good like good four or five years after it came out on home video, me and my family would just watch it. Like if, if it was just me and my parents after my brother and my yeah. and my sister moved to different states, we would just watch it together and just laugh our asses off because um, it just never got old for us. Also, Tyrion Lannister. So you know, oh yeah, yeah that's <laughs> it, guys. Oh, man, <laughs> get woke. Call me an elf one more time. Uh, <laughs> and then he does the like charging down the table thing and it's all super good. it's oh, so God. great that's great oh man i love him being uh so add and distracted with everything and at the desk it's and like when a, the phone uh, rings he goes it's kind of like a greeting like like when i would work at blockbuster I'd be like uh thank you for calling blockbuster scoop 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 how can i help you yeah and like when he answered he's like his greeting is buddy the elf what's your favorite color and I yeah. thought that shit was hilarious. I'm pretty sure I answered the phone a few times like that at Blockbuster. Like, I was just, <laughs> this is Blockbuster, what's your favorite color? And they were just like, what the fuck? Because uh, I think we had caller ID, and I could just tell when it was somebody that would tolerate that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I love, man, oh, this movie's so good. And John Favreau, uh, the, the dude, that I, don't th- I don't know if he directed anything else before this. I know he starred in Swingers, and Doug Lyman did that movie. But um, Did he oh, write he did Swingers? Did he? I don't know about that. Oh, about that dude. Uh, he, that just, he directed oh, Made. He directed Made and then Elf right after that. And then yeah, he, did he wrote Thura, which I never saw. He fucking wrote but... Swingers, man. He wrote Swingers. He wrote wow. Swingers. He wrote. He did write. And he produced it. Mikey's uh, all grows up. I think he Mikey's was in it too. All grows up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, this was like his his second movie ever was Elf. And it was a, no pun intended, giant task. And mm. also, <laughs> Bob Newhart is, like, one of my favorite comedic actors ever. Um, yeah. And he plays, like, his dad or something. It's just his his comedy timing and stuff is just so unnatural. And it makes me laugh every time. He's just so deadpan and yeah, he's got he's got that reluctant look a lot. Like, when he's sitting on his yeah. lap and she's just like, oh, my God. And like, his stutter of... just works. It, yeah. 
it, he does that in every role. Like that's his that's his thing, his new heart's thing. But like it, I was come I like when I was doing theater and stuff and. And I mean, this, these compliments don't mean shit when you're in high school. I learned in the real world, like they were just trying to make you, they were just trying to help you in high school. They were just, the teachers were trying to make sure you didn't kill yourself. That's all they were yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah. They just want to get uh, you through. So you're not their problem anymore. They want to get so you whatever through. the fuck happens, it's not on their watch. But I did have a theater director tell me that my comedic tendencies in timing when I would act reminded him, him of Newhart because it was just weird and unnatural and stuff. This is when I was acting, not when I'm just talking like a dork on this podcast. Mm. Uh, so it's different. Acting. It's different. Acting. I am an actor. Acting. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I love the cast. Zoe Deschanel. This was like my intro to her. Yep. And and yep. this was like this is this was the weird thing is like I knew her as blonde because of this movie. Oh And then yeah, I see her with dark true. hair in her first movie after, and I'm like, like what the fuck is this? And now I I see this movie again, and I'm like. The fuck happened to Zoe Deschanel's blonde? She's got blonde hair in this. It looks so weird. Uh, <laughs> it's so jarring, and I love that it's cold outside. Intrusive shower scene, which that song is super rapey, by the way. But that's a great scene. Uh, <laughs> it is. Listen to the lyrics. What's in this drink? It's so weird. Anyway, uh, <laughs> good movie. Uh, great physical humor from Will Ferrell, and I love the ending. Even if it's cheesy with the Christmas cheer and they're singing together. I mean, there's something about that. Even the most cold-hearted person like James Caan, perfectly cast, by the way, can, like, you know, turn around, you know, and just get a little bit. That's all it takes is a little bit. Just be a little fucking joyous uh, hey, during worked. the most joyful time of the year. It worked for Ghostbusters 2, so why can't it work for Elf? Yeah, you know? right? And I didn't see Ghostbusters 2 in enough time for me to remember that. So <laughs> I loved it in Elf. <laughs> Uh, but JD, that's your number one too. Did you it watch is. it with your familia as well, or just uh, after saw, the fact? Saw it in the theater with the immediate family, and it has become. Um, it, if it's not Home Alone, that's like choice number two for sure. <clears throat> so oh, yeah, wow. it's it's definitely up there for me. Like you said, it's it's just festive as fuck, and it's uh, it's proof that a raunchy or kind of envelope pushing comedian can do a family comedy mm-hmm. and succeed at it. Um, unlike a lot of other great great comedians of my childhood but anyway yeah i, I just like I, just... <laughs> I can't even gather who you're referencing <laughs> never none 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 of them none? they're can't, all good can't, you can't you can't okay good um no man just, just fucking love this movie it, it defines yeah. christmas for me for sure it, yeah so. yeah i yeah i can see that it's kind of like that um you know how it, it reminds me of the uh the opening of rudolph with the elf who makes toys but wants to become a dentist for some reason. And um, the snowman telling <laughs> the so story weird. and stuff. It, the beginning kind of reminds me of that, like, fish out of water type of story. It's so yeah. some of that brings me, brings the nostalgia for that, too. It's it, I get a weird, like, cathartic experience watching this movie. And mm-hmm. it's just a fucking Christmas movie. <laughs> like, it's not anything special like a movie we're about to talk about. So, I, I don't know what it is. I think it's just a personal attachment that made it number one. Um, but I mean, that's the thing with these lists. We're totally biased. Yeah. Um, it's in the brackets where we start to hash it out, you know, in debates. Um, but anyway, we're, we're the Kyle's number one now. Uh, but you did have elephant number five. I did. Yeah. I'm, so you I did like it movie. at least. It's a movie I enjoy, uh, on a more recent watch, you know, I was just like, oh yeah, yeah you know, I, I was, I was the issue. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, uh, it's a very fun movie and, and very funny and, uh, what a cast! You know, so many, so many great people in there. Yeah, um, you know, it's 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 still funny. You know, it's it's, it's uh, I've watched it, you know, multiple times since you mm-hmm. know uh, since enjoying it. You know, on a more recent watching, and it's just a, this is a fun movie. So excited to get around to it this year since it's ranked so high. Faison Love was great in it too. He plays the manager at the store. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. That's Santa's right. Santa's coming, and he's like Santa, and he starts <laughs> screaming and stuff. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Faison, Faison Love being, like, the serious dude. He's so fucking funny, dude. Uh, yeah. Underrated comedic talent. Very, right very underrated. Because he just does bit parts that you're like, oh, that guy, you know? Um, but he's so good at, like, just serious, totally stonewalling you in, in a scene. Um, <laughs> God damn it. Andy Richter was in this, too. I don't remember that for some reason. Richter? What? And Kyle Gass was in it from uh, Tenacious D? No. I'm gonna have to watch this movie again. Apparently, what? I mean, it's due. We're due oh, because oh, it's that remember, time of year. I remember. I remember. Kyle oh, okay. Yeah. Now, I wonder if Kyle Gass and Andy Richter were like part of the same scene or something. I can't remember Richter. I can't place it. That's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. I've seen that movie too many times. 
Artie yeah, Lang was in this? Good. Kids watch this movie and they're going to be like, who's Artie Lang? Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that guy says some fucked up shit. Yeah, uh, real fucked <laughs> um, But I'm glad you came around to it, though. I mean, if it was like this thing, kind of like Santa Claus, where it's just like, I just don't appreciate that movie like you guys do, uh, I would be I would be so like, hard. No, <laughs> Santa Claus, I, dude, I have no idea what I have, but psh, I don't know about that movie. I don't know. I'm not saying that you hate it. It's just like no, it's no, not no, on our level. No, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. But uh, I, and I, I can't even point out, like, I can't like even build a list of like the things that don't meet my requirements for Santa Claus. Right. But uh, oh, I, I don't know. I, I think I, it was one of those like Napoleon Dynamite things where everyone's like, this is the best Christmas movie ever. Been, and I heard it for years, you know, and I was just like, uh, no, it's not. Well, I don't, <laughs> oh, well, yeah. uh, I don't. Uh, you guys are just building it, and I finally watched it. I only watched it like maybe two or three years after it came out, but like it was just so much like just like the so finding hype. the finding Nemo effect. You gotta see this movie; it's so good, you know. And I watched it. I'm like, you guys, it wasn't that fucking good, you know. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, it's another then, 2003 movie. That's so funny. You mentioned Finding Nemo because like <laughs> what is, it's like the 2003 effect. Apparently, like apparently, what is it about yeah. movies that came out around People that time. Loved movies that year, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they really loved them. They loved to like force them on you and stuff. But. And you over here, like guys, I'm gonna watch Return of the King for the sixth time. Yeah, for okay? the tenth time. Yeah, yeah. please yeah. sign me sign me up for that party instead. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Except I was over there going, guys, I'm going to watch Matrix Reloaded for the 16th time in theaters, so I'll yeah. be right back. And that that's fine. And I'm going to watch the director's commentary Reloaded. Thank you. <laughs> they built a highway, guys! Uh, they built a highway. I don't know. I don't know why I have to like justify why I like that car chase scene to people when they're like, uh, if, if you have they to just justify like fart noises that, every time. Be, okay, I understand the movie. I don't understand the movie. But they they don't like the movie. Great. If you say you don't like that scene, you're dumb. Yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Even people like I I watch I watch and listen to the Cinema Sin guys on their podcast. I watch some of their videos depending on the movie if I've seen it or whatever. Um, they were on a movie fights episode uh, when back when they had the guy who was really creepy with women. Mm-hmm. on the show there's a pattern here i guess no. guys in hollywood anyway um hmm. they were on that Super show sense. and and they mentioned like it was like the best car chase scene or whatever and i think the cinema sins guys no they chose french connection and the screen junkies guys chose uh matrix reloaded oh yeah and they debated it so well that they won the point for the debate like because it's it's a great fucking scene even in like what was this two, three years ago when they had this debate? It still holds up by those standards. Yeah. Whereas French Connection, we talked about. We did. It's a lot of like driving under a tunnel, beeping your horn. It's it's tough to get through that yeah. like a little bit, <laughs> uh, even if the movie is largely better than the chase. Uh, that's my opinion on that, at least. Sorry for all the sacrilegious comments. <laughs> but anyway, Matrix Reloaded is great. And honestly, if we were ranking 2003 movies, which we may end up, if we have time, for 2018 because it's a good year it's a loaded year we may do like the fives you know what i mean in 2003 would be like 15 years ago mm-hmm. yeah yeah so we could do that if we wanted to matrix reloaded would probably be my number one i'll be honest even probably if my, return, probably return of the king one. came out that year matrix reloaded would be my number one still well return of the king <laughs> is my least favorite of that trilogy so like oh, okay that makes man. sense i love I think, it dude i love that whole i love trilogy. it too but it's i, still I think my return least of the king might be my number one dude i wow. know Return of the King is so fucking long. Like <laughs> that's the I, only it, thing for it, me. Yeah, it is, but I loved all I, nineteen hey, I, endings, I, though. I loved all hey, of them, and I don't even have a problem with all nineteen endings. I love that movie more than <laughs> most people, man. But like, dude, Fellowship like, of the Ring is fucking masterful. Like the, the whole the, entire just it is journey. The you know, it's not about like the the big bombastic horse shit going on yet. You know, I, agree. And I would argue that Helm's Deep is a better, bigger battle. Helm's just, Deep is yeah, my favorite battle Helm's in Deep. the entire series, Man, but I would like, the line that got, got me to together. cry, I actually cried in the theater, was the, you bow to no one. I cried around my friends, and I'm like, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm a big softy. Just I, would, uh, I, I was uh, definitely uh, crying in the theater during that part. You bow to no one. Yeah, like, it's like, oh my I god, Eric. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Yeah, great shit. I'm glad we went on the 2003 diatribe. We might, we might. The only thing I, if we do have time for those, the movies that we go by fives instead of tens, mm-hmm. um, I, I would, I would leave out 2013 because it's too recent. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I like, agree. Give it some time because that's five years. I mean, I don't really care to go five years back. Yeah, I think fifteen and twenty five is much yeah. more if if we even have time for a second one back. Yeah, exactly. Because I barely found time for two thousand eight fucking movies, and we still have to do nineteen ninety eight. Right. 1990, and eighty twenty five would be nineteen ninety two. By the way, or nineteen ninety three. Yeah, nineteen eighty eight is a shit year for movies. <laughs> Is it? I put together my list. I have one honorable mention. Oh, I, have, no. I, have, I have I have all my lists set up. I, uh, I'll have to go back and look at all my lists. Fucking sucks, dude. Like, I, <laughs> I you know me. I never looked this far ahead. But man. Let's see what's in 1980, I have one honorable mention, and it's the land before time. That's it. That's all I got. That not make your top ten. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch it again. That's why, probably. Is that um, 98? Yeah, it came out 88. 80. Okay, 98, I, I say, have more, but it's a say, lesser year than 1998. Uh, yeah, that sounds more right, because I've been watching that yeah. since I was like a kid. I'm like, no, oh, there's yeah, no way sure, I was a teenager too. watching that movie. <laughs> like, there's <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> uh, I'm glad that 1998 we're going to do because Rush Hour came out that year, and it was in my 10, and then Brett Ratner, all that stuff about him being a piece of shit human being that we all kind of suspected, but now it's confirmed. I can just remove that from my list, and it'll be fine, because I still have Blade in my honorable mentions. Mm-hmm. So. It'll be fine. Uh, we t- totally diverted, but it's worth it because the number one movie for Kyle, right? I assume yeah. is about some penis tits and ass, right? Penis mm-hmm. tits and ass. That's what they call it, man. Uh, <laughs> Paul Thomas is an Anderson. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's close, man. Uh, yeah, it's uh, playing trains and automobiles. Cla- Fuck yeah, dude. Classic. Classic. Absolutely. Movie. Absolutely. Uh, we've all the been only there. Thanksgiving movie worth mentioning. <laughs> I guess it is. Yeah, it is about yeah. Thanksgiving, isn't it? That's how crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, just now that's just now dawning on me. Anyways, uh, <laughs> man, what a what a what a fun fucking movie this is. I love yeah. these two together. Like, could we have gotten like a, just a uh, just a, a hundred more movies with just like John Candy and Steve Martin working off? Yeah, together? please, please, please. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it sucks. Uh, but yeah, I just I love them together. I love Steve Martin in like bitter asshole mode. Me too. Um, you know, I hated whenever they tried to remake this movie uh, with uh, Iron Man and uh, Zach Galifagukis. Uh, oh, due date. Yeah. Due date. Mm, like that, different reason for cross country, but yeah, just the worst movie ever. <laughs> I really don't like that movie. Um, and. Um, yeah, this movie just got a lot of heart, you know. Um, they yeah. kind of got a budding relationship. They hate each other at first. They're kind of adversaries. He's constantly annoyed with him. And by the end of him, you know, like he's inviting him over, you know, for Thanksgiving dinner. And, uh, you know, he's got a sad kind of story he's carrying too. But he's such a can-do kind of attitude guy. And it's just like kind of goes yeah. into that like, man, yeah, the people who are the nicest are kind of carrying around the heaviest burdens, you know. And it's just... Uh, yeah. I mean, he's li- he is literally carrying around the heaviest burden because of his fucking giant ass briefcase or yeah. whatever the fuck that is the trunk that he carries around yeah oh yeah i mean it's that's symbolic a it's physical super symbol, symbolic yeah, yeah. A symbol of like all of this baggage that he carries with him literally um, him. yeah it's, it's, man uh the chemistry between these two it, yes that, that's what that's what i love about this movie so much and i just saw this for the first time like a year ago or something mm-hmm. and and it was in my number one spot for a long time but i had to like kind of go towards personal preference over like I think this is a better story and better told and better directed and stuff. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, Elf just has more sentimental value. Uh, but anyway, this movie is fucking tremendous, dude. Like, it really is. The yeah. chemistry of this two is what absolutely like anchors this movie, and um, and how polar opposite they are. You just buy it. I mean, you buy that this John Candy is just this welcoming, warm sometimes intrusive guy who has some annoying tendencies and as watching this as an adult i'm sitting there in steve martin's shoes going god fuck this guy leave me alone yeah right, you know right. like <laughs> i'm the, the cynical up. adult now watching this movie like going god this guy's fucking annoying um but yeah when you hear his story and he first gives that monologue in the hotel that family guy makes fun of actually um the whole you want to hurt me you can go ahead and hurt me and all that yeah. stuff yeah. uh it's a great heartfelt monologue unfortunately i saw it on family guy before i saw it here so i was laughing um, <laughs> oh man <laughs> but it is heartfelt i acknowledge you know the spot that the character's in like a when family guy it, uh, ruining shit again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and i think he says it when somebody calls him fat i can't even remember um i can't even remember the context of family guy that is but it comes out of nowhere and Lois is like, what the fuck are you talking about? Get out of the house. Like, it's crazy. Uh, but, um, um, but it is great to hear, to hear his story and how he, does, he just has no one. It's heartbreaking. 
at the end, and then also heartwarming. So it's like tears of pain and then joy. At the yeah, end. yeah, double whammy. Um, it totally holds up, man. And I, I know that. I, I mean, there's some 80s sounds in terms of the soundtrack and stuff, and and in terms of uh, how people are getting a hold of each other and stuff. But other than that, yeah, it's a timeless movie, dude. It's, An Uber. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. It's timeless <laughs> as fuck, dude. It's just it, you can put this in any era, and it would just add, it adds up. It makes sense. Whereas if we had cell phones now, it would just be this. This story wouldn't exist. Um, but still, I'm saying it's still timeless. The message and the whatever the journey. The car on fire and all that shit. The fuck, the fuck <laughs> scene is great. Um, they took an R rating just for one scene. I think that's just brilliant. <laughs> just for one scene, they were like, "Yeah, we'll we'll be R rated just so we can say fuck eighteen times." <laughs> <laughs> I love that scene. Um, JD had it at two as well, right? I did. Yeah, man. Yeah. This, this one's uh, this one's really good for me. So I can't wait to rewatch it because I think uh, it is on stars. I have that. Eh, I have a. It. I have I have other more nefarious means, maybe, but not. Okay, Liam Neeson. Maybe. Okay. Uh, I will find your movie and I will download I will, it. I will find it. <laughs> I have a special set of list. skills. I have a <laughs> special set of my skills. On my list. It's, it's really right. just uh, BitTorrent sites and... Uh, uh, I don't know which, what's BitTorrent. I have no idea what that is. Uh, yeah, what? Did I even use that right? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. What is that? Is that a thing? <laughs> Bert, Bert, Turn. Bert. Bert Bert How many is Bert? I'm Bert Turnt. Bert, Bert I'm Turnt. Bert and I turn. <laughs> Damn it. There you go. Um, do we have anything else to say on these movies? Or no, nah, man. Let's save okay. it for the. Let's save it for the debate. Yeah, now. for sure. And and let's then save. we'll. Uh, yeah, we got to put them in the bracket though. And I I carved out like eleven spots so far to try okay. and be fair. I think as an aggregate, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles needs to be number one. Because I agree. It's mm-hmm. yeah. I agree. It's too high for all of us to just put it at number two just because Elf is Agreed. number one for Jay and I. Um, but okay. then Elf at two, okay. right? <clears throat> sure, um, sure, sure, sure. 100%. Scrooged at three. Yep. Because that makes sense average-wise. Okay. Um, even though JD didn't have it on his list, I kind of want to go Christmas Story just because Kyle had it at two and I That's had it fine, at five. That's fine, dude. I okay. respect the Christmas shit out of that good. movie. I just, yeah. need to, like, I just need to watch it all the way through. Yeah. Such a good movie, man. He just wants and to then, eat um, I know, J.D., you mentioned this was an oversight for you. Christmas Vacation or Santa Claus? Which one do you ooh, want to go ooh, next? Ooh. Man, I think Christmas Vacation. Okay. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, we're just talking placement and, at this point. They're going to make the list, so. Yeah, and then and then throw in Santa Claus because you and I both had it. Sure, 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 sure. I say, I mean, if, we're talking, if we're talking commonalities. Uh, you got Nightmare? Yeah, Nightmare. Nightmare, for yeah. sure. We all three had it. Um. Then actually, I'm gonna put Nightmare above Santa Claus just because we all three had Nightmare. You should fix it. You should line up uh, yes, yeah. Home Alone and Home Alone Two uh, in the spot that they're gonna have to fight each other. Oh, the seven and eight. <laughs> the seven and eight. Oh, you yeah. know what? Fuck it. I'll do it. Yeah, you should fix it. Yeah. Oh Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, it's yeah. on the list. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna make eight, seven. So seven is Santa Claus, and Nightmare is it moved up to six because we all three had it instead of just two of us. Oh, okay. Um, and Christmas Vacation, I acknowledge, is a great movie, so I'm going to leave it at five. Okay. Um, I just left it off my list just because I wanted to see if Imbruja could, could make this bracket. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, we have Home Alone 2 versus uh, Home Alone in 8 and 9, of course. Uh, it's 8 and 9. That's well, no, it'd be yeah. Yeah. Seven, 7 and 8. Are the, I thought 8 and 9 always me, fight right? each other. 8 and 9 always fight each other. Oh, God, um, I can't math. And after that, a commonality is Gremlins. We can put that in there. Okay. Cool. And... Do we, I don't think we have anything. We don't have anything else in common. Oh no, you didn't have that on your list, yeah. Uh, we can put. Well, I, I mean, had the ref kind of high. We can put the ref. Put the ref, yeah. If, it, if we haven't and gotten off the list. Then what? trading places or die hard or. Um, man, not I, die I, harder. Sorry, die I'd hard. Honestly, or if we're gonna go else. with the cheat movie, I'd rather have Kiss Kiss be the the higher seed over die hard. Oh, okay. Uh well then we'll go fuck what was the Kyle one that I was gonna put trading he- places that's right Hebrew hammer and trading places I haven't gotten on there yet so Hebrew hammer or trading places which one do you would you think deserves a higher spot oh man I'm gonna go Hebrew hammer that's what I okay. think so I'll put that next and then we'll go uh kiss kiss fuck fuck yeah I like that. Uh, <laughs> That's not apparently that's not in the list of the <laughs> movies that Letterbox has is Kiss Kiss Fuck Fuck. Ah, yeah. <laughs> it's big uh, big the lesser known movie, Kiss Kiss Fuck Fuck. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, 
Uh, trading places. Oh, man. I guess I, I, I don't want to be a shithead and leave out It's a Wonderful Life. So I guess we got to put it in here somewhere. Maybe not. It's a two and like two hours, 15 minute movie. Look, just just know that I put it on my list, everybody. Don't bitch at me. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, so, <laughs> Die Hard, uh, we're definitely going to put in here. Because if not, people will definitely bitch at us. Yes. Um, and then number 16 seed. So, we have left. We have <laughs> we have not Jingle All the Way. Yeah, and, don't uh, <laughs> do that. Don't encourage that type of shit. We have in Bruges. We could do in Bruges. I'm watching in Bruges tonight, so okay. get get it in there, man. Yeah, just get it in there because we're talking about it. Yeah. But we're gonna have to focus on the festivity of each movie, basically. When we yeah, it's just like gonna get knocked out. Sorry, but just so we can talk about it and be like, why is it in this fucking tournament? It'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. So go look for our licks, list, our list, our licks on uh, letterboxd.com. That's b o x d dot com slash e o c pod. Go look for us there. We're gonna find the list for all our shit. Um, so thanks for listening, uh, and it's been our Tournament Champions Podcast, and, and you can find me on Twitter at Jeff Woody, and go to, go to, you know, YouTube and iTunes and Stitcher and TuneIn and Facebook, especially, so we can chit-chat, we have a chit-chat, 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 chit-chat. Uh, Kyle, you are, you have a presence online, correct? Yeah, I have some sort of presence online. Uh, we're, we're trying to do some sort of podcast over at Subcultured. Uh, oh, nice. They're a little more, like, thought out and, not like this isn't thought out, but they're more structured and stuff like that, so yeah. it takes longer to shoot them and record them. So that should be coming soon, because we're recording a whole bunch at once and then uh, putting out, we've done two already. Um... Yeah, so that's something I'm that's coming. For that shit. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Um, and uh, then I've got the streaming going on over at that Twitch TV slash sub underscore cultured and uh, whatnot. Uh, I think uh, we're doing Final Fantasy 15 uh, online. That game went online recently, so me and my my buddies are been playing that. So uh, come join us. Cool, man. And JD, you you exist. Yeah, I do things. Um, just. Usually not uh, on social media and stuff. It's so. cool that you exist. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that it's, you're alive. Man. You know what? It might be my greatest achievement, actually. <laughs> think about it. Just Fuck. existing. Oh, that caught me off guard. That was funny. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, stay tuned for the tournament next episode. And then after that, we're going to get into most anticipated. I think we're going to do TV shows first. Um, I the way I make my list, I do only new shows. But you guys can do like shows that you can't wait to come back to television to. That's fine. I will try to do only new shows, but uh, no promises. <laughs> Stranger yeah. Things. Stranger. Yeah. I think Stranger Things isn't coming until 2019. Is what I heard. No. Probably not. I Game of Thrones yeah, too. Probably not. Uh, Game of Thrones is 100 percent not coming until 2019. Yeah, definitely not. I've only seen like 18 different articles. Like, oh, bad, more bad news for Game of Thrones fans. It's not oh, anymore. you're all gonna have to wait. Yeah, I'm like. I'm oh like, yeah, God. this has been known for like seven yeah, or like, eight I don't months care. now. Westworld's like, coming out next year, which is 100 percent going to make my list. Uh, true, yeah. true. <laughs> so that, that I'm making mine all new shows, but it was tougher this year because last year was like easy, like holy shit, look at all these new shows. And this year, I'm kind of like, oh boy, how am I going to talk about this one? Basically, <laughs> 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 like I have one honorable mention. Um, there's a lot of interesting shows coming out. It's suspected that maybe the Sons of Anarchy spinoff will come out next year. Oh, man. Um, so that would be exciting. Um, Nicholas Winding Reference new show could come out to Amazon finally. Ooh. I'd be excited as fuck for that. But anyway, that's so that's what's next is like most anticipated stuff. And then we're just going to do all the mediums in a row, like video games and movies, um, as well as well, TV shows starting it off. Um, so stay tuned for year-end stuff, too. And we'll talk about that at the end of every episode so you guys know to get hype. And create your own list. And uh, share your own list with us and shit. And tell us when we're wrong, because I enjoy that. But if you want to give constructive criticism on how we talk to each other, I really don't give a shit. Uh, So, (laughs) stay tuned for all that. See you guys later on the day.